Exodus. Chapter 1. And these, are, the names of the sons of Israel who are coming into Egypt with Jacob, a man and his household have they come. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin. Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And all the persons coming out of the thigh of Jacob are seventy persons, as to Joseph, he was in Egypt. And Joseph dieth, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the sons of Israel have been fruitful, and they teem, and multiply, and are very very mighty, and the land is filled with them. And there riseth a new king over Egypt, who hath not known Joseph. And he saith unto his people, Lo, the people of the sons of Israel, is, more numerous and mighty than we. Give help. Let us act wisely concerning it, lest it multiply, and it hath come to pass, when war happeneth, that it hath been joined, even it, unto those hating us, and hath fought against us, and hath gone out up of the land. And they set over it princes of tribute, so as to afflict it with their burdens, and it buildeth store cities for Pharaoh, Pithom and Ramses. And as they afflict it, so it multiplieth, and so it breaketh forth, and they are vexed because of the sons of Israel. And the Egyptians cause the sons of Israel to serve with rigor. And make their lives bitter in hard service, in clay, and in brick, and in every, kind, of service in the field, all their service in which they have served, is, with rigor. And the king of Egypt speaketh to the midwives, the Hebrewesses, of whom the name of the one, is, Shifra, and the name of the second Pua. And saith, When ye cause the Hebrew women to bear, and have looked on the children, if it, is, a son, then ye have put him to death, and if it, is, a daughter, then she hath lived. And the midwives fear God, and have not done as the king of Egypt hath spoken unto them, and keep the lads alive. And the king of Egypt calleth for the midwives, and saith to them, Wherefore have ye done this thing, and keep the lads alive? And the midwives say unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women, are, not as the Egyptian women, for they, are, lively, before the midwife cometh in unto them, they have borne. And God doth good to the midwives, and the people multiply, and are very mighty. And it cometh to pass, because the midwives have feared God, that he mocketh for them households. And Pharaoh layeth a charge on all his people, saying, Every son who is born into the river ye do cast him, and every daughter ye do keep alive. Chapter 2 And there goeth a man of the house of Levi, and he taketh the daughter of Levi. And the woman conceiveth, and beareth a son, and she seeth him that he, is, fair, and she hideth him three months. And she hath not been able any more to hide him, and she taketh for him an ark of rushes, and daubeth it with bitumen and with pitch, and putteth the lad in it, and putteth, it, in the weeds by the edge of the river. And his sister stationeth herself afar off, to know what is done to him. And a daughter of Pharaoh cometh down to bathe at the river, and her damsels are walking by the side of the river, and she seeth the ark in the midst of the weeds, and sendeth her handmaid, and she taketh it. And openeth, and seeth him, the lad, and lo, a child weeping. And she hath pity on him, and saith, This is, one, of the Hebrews' children. And his sister saith unto the daughter of Pharaoh, Do I go? When I have called for thee a suckling woman of the Hebrews, then she doth suckle the lad for thee. And the daughter of Pharaoh saith to her, Go, and the virgin goeth, and calleth the mother of the lad. And the daughter of Pharaoh saith to her, Take this lad away, and suckle him for me, and I, I give thy hire, and the woman taketh the lad, and suckleth him. And the lad groweth, and she bringeth him in to the daughter of Pharaoh, and he is to her for a son, and she calleth his name Moses, and saith, Because, from the water I have drawn him. And it cometh to pass, in those days, that Moses is grown, and he goeth out unto his brethren, and looketh on their burdens, and seeth a man, an Egyptian, smiting a man, a Hebrew, one, of his brethren. And he turneth hither and thither, and seeth that there is no man, and smitteth the Egyptian, and hideth him in the sand. And he goeth out on the second day, and lo, two men, Hebrews, striving. 
And he saith to the wrongdoer, Why dost thou smite thy neighbor? And he saith, Who set thee for a head and a judge over us? To slay me art thou saying, It, as thou hast slain the Egyptian, and Moses feareth, and saith, Surely the thing hath been known. And Pharaoh heareth of this thing, and seeketh to slay Moses, and Moses fleeth from the face of Pharaoh, and dwelleth in the land of Midian, and dwelleth by the well. And to a priest of Midian, are, seven daughters, and they come and draw, and fill the troughs, to water the flock of their father. And the shepherds come and drive them away, and Moses Ari saith, and saveth them, and watereth their flock. And they come in to Ruel their father, and he saith, Wherefore have ye hastened to come in today? And they say, A man, an Egyptian, hath delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds, and also hath diligently drawn for us, and watereth the flock. And he saith unto his daughters, And where, is, he? Why, is, this? Ye left the man. Call for him, and he doth eat bread. And Moses is willing to dwell with the man, and he giveth Zipporah his daughter to Moses. And she beareth a son, and he calleth his name Gershom, for he said, A sojourner I have been in a strange land. And it cometh to pass during these many days, that the king of Egypt dieth, and the sons of Israel sigh because of the service, and cry, and their cry goeth up unto God, because of the service. And God heareth their groaning, and God remembereth his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God seeth the sons of Israel, and God knoweth. Chapter 3 And Moses hath been feeding the flock of Jethro his father-in-law, priest of Midian, and he leddeth the flock behind the wilderness, and cometh in unto the mount of God, to Horeb. And there appeareth unto him a messenger of Jehovah in a flame of fire, out of the midst of the bush, and he seeth, and lo, the bush is burning with fire, and the bush is not consumed. And Moses saith, Let me turn aside, I pray thee, and I see this great appearance, wherefore is the bush not burned? And Jehovah seeth that he hath turned aside to see, and God calleth unto him out of the midst of the bush, and saith, Moses, Moses, and he saith, Here, am, I. And he saith, Come not near hither, cast thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place on which thou art standing is holy ground. He saith also, I, am, the God of thy father, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, and Moses hideth his face, for he is afraid to look towards God. And Jehovah saith, I have certainly seen the affliction of my people who, are, in Egypt, and their cry I have heard, because of its exactors, for I have known its pains. And I go down to deliver it out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to cause it to go up out of the land, unto a land good and broad, unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Amorite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. And now, lo, the cry of the sons of Israel hath come in unto me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians are oppressing them. And now, come, and I send thee unto Pharaoh, and bring thou out my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses saith unto God, Who, am, I, that I go unto Pharaoh, and that I bring out the sons of Israel from Egypt? And he saith, Because I am with thee, and this, is, to thee the sign that I have sent thee, in thy bringing out the people from Egypt, ye do serve God on this mount. And Moses saith unto God, Lo, I am coming unto the sons of Israel, and have said to them, the God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they have said to me, What, is, his name? What do I say unto them? And God saith unto Moses, I am that which I am, he saith also, Thus dost thou say to the sons of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And God saith again unto Moses, Thus dost thou say unto the sons of Israel, Jehovah, God of your fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you this, is, my name, to the age, and this my memorial, to generation, generation. Go, and thou hast gathered the elders of Israel, and hast said unto them, Jehovah, God of your fathers, hath appeareth unto me, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I have certainly inspected you, and that which is done to you in Egypt. 
And I say, I bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt, unto the land of the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Amorite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite, unto a land flowing, with, milk and honey. And they have hearkened to thy voice, and thou hast entered, thou and the elders of Israel, unto the king of Egypt, and ye have said unto him, Jehovah, God of the Hebrews, hath met with us, and now, let us go, we pray thee, a journey of three days into the wilderness, and we sacrifice to Jehovah our God. And I, I have known that the king of Egypt doth not permit you to go, unless by a strong hand. And I have put forth my hand, and have smitten Egypt with all my wonders, which I do in its midst and afterwards he doth send you away. And I have given the grace of this people in the eyes of the Egyptians, and it hath come to pass, when ye go, ye go not empty. And every woman hath asked from her neighbor, and from her who is sojourning in her house, vessels of silver, and vessels of gold, and garments, and ye have put them on your sons and on your daughters, and have spoiled the Egyptians. Chapter 4 And Moses answereth and saith, And, if they do not give credence to me, nor hearken to my voice, and say, Jehovah hath not appeared unto thee? And Jehovah saith unto him, What, is, this in thy hand? And he saith, A rod. And he saith, Cast it to the earth, and he casteth it to the earth, and it becometh a serpent and Moses fleeth from its presence. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Put forth thy hand, and lay hold on the tail of it, and he putteth forth his hand, and layeth hold on it, and it becometh a rod in his hand. So that they believe that Jehovah, God of their fathers, hath appeared unto thee, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. And Jehovah saith to him again, Put in, I pray thee, thy hand into thy bosom, and he putteth in his hand into his bosom, and he bringeth it out, and lo, his hand, is, leprous as snow. And he saith, Put back thy hand unto thy bosom, and he putteth back his hand unto his bosom, and he bringeth it out from his bosom, and lo, it hath turned back as his flesh. And it hath come to pass, if they do not give credence to thee, and hearken not to the voice of the first sign, that they have given credence to the voice of the latter sign. And it hath come to pass, if they do not give credence even to these two signs, nor hearken to thy voice, that thou hast taken of the waters of the river, and hast poured on the dry land, and the waters which thou takest from the river have been, yea, they have become, blood on the dry land. And Moses saith unto Jehovah, O, my Lord, I, am, not a man of words, either yesterday, or before, or since thy speaking unto thy servant, for I, am, slow of mouth, and slow of tongue. And Jehovah saith unto him, who appointed a mouth for man? Or who appointeth the dumb, or deaf, or open, or blind? Is it not I, Jehovah? And now, go, and I, I am with thy mouth, and have directed thee that which thou speakest. And he saith, O, my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand thou dost send. And the anger of Jehovah burneth against Moses, and he saith, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I have known that he speaketh well, and also, lo, he is coming out to meet thee, when he hath seen thee, then he hath rejoiced in his heart. And thou hast spoken unto him, and hast set the words in his mouth, and I, I am with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and have directed you that which ye do. And he, he hath spoken for thee unto the people, and it hath come to pass, he, he is to thee for a mouth, and thou, thou art to him for God. And this rod thou dost take in thy hand, with which thou doest the signs. And Moses goeth and turneth back unto Jethro his father-in-law, and saith to him, Let me go, I pray thee, and I turn back unto my brethren who, are, in Egypt, and I see whether they are yet alive. And Jethro saith to Moses, Go in peace. And Jehovah saith unto Moses in Midian, Go, turn back to Egypt, for all the men have died who seek thy life. And Moses taketh his wife, and his sons, and causeth them to ride on the ass, and turneth back to the land of Egypt, and Moses taketh the rod of God in his hand. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, In thy going to turn back to Egypt, see, all the wonders which I have put in thy hand that thou hast done them before Pharaoh, 
and I, I strengthen his heart, and he doth not send the people away. And thou hast said unto Pharaoh, Thus said Jehovah, My son, my firstborn, is, Israel. And I say unto thee, Send away my son, and he doth serve me, and, thou dost refuse to send him away, lo, I am slaying thy son, thy firstborn. And it cometh to pass in the way, in a lodging place, that Jehovah meeteth him, and seeketh to put him to death. And Zipporah taketh a flint, and cutteth off the foreskin of her son, and causeth, it, to touch his feet, and saith, Surely a bridegroom of blood, art, thou to me. And he desisteth death from him, then she said, A bridegroom of blood, in reference to the circumcision. And Jehovah saith unto Aaron, Go to meet Moses into the wilderness, and he goeth, and meeteth him in the mount of God, and kisseth him. And Moses declareth to Aaron all the words of Jehovah with which he hath sent him, and all the signs with which he hath charged him. And Moses goeth Aaron also, and they gather all the elders of the sons of Israel. And Aaron speaketh all the words which Jehovah hath spoken unto Moses, and doth the signs before the eyes of the people. And the people believe when they hear that Jehovah hath looked after the sons of Israel, and that he hath seen their affliction, and they bow and do obeisance. Chapter 5 And afterwards have Moses and Aaron entered, and they say unto Pharaoh, Thus said Jehovah, God of Israel, Send my people away, and they keep a feast to me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh saith, Who, is, Jehovah, that I hearken to his voice, to send Israel away? I have not known Jehovah, and Israel also I do not send away. And they say, The God of the Hebrews hath met with us, let us go, we pray thee, a journey of three days into the wilderness, and we sacrifice to Jehovah our God, lest he meet us with pestilence or with sword. And the king of Egypt saith unto them, Why, Moses and Aaron, do ye free the people from its works? Go to your burdens. Pharaoh also saith, Lo, numerous now, is, the people of the land, and ye have caused them to cease from their burdens. And Pharaoh come and death, on that day, the exactors among the people and its authorities, saying, Ye do not add to give straw to the people for the making of the bricks, as heretofore, they go and have gathered straw for themselves. And the proper quantity of the bricks which they are making heretofore ye do put on them, ye do not diminish from it, for they are remiss, therefore they are crying, saying, Let us go, let us sacrifice to our God. Let the service be heavy on the men, and let them work at it, and not be dazzled by lying words. And the exactors of the people, and its authorities, go out, and speak unto the people, saying, Thus said Pharaoh, I do not give you straw. Ye, go ye, take for yourselves straw where ye find, it, for there is nothing of your service diminished. And the people is scattered over all the land of Egypt, to gather stubble for straw. And the exactors are making haste, saying, Complete your works, the matter of a day in its day, as when there is straw. And the authorities of the sons of Israel, whom the exactors of Pharaoh have placed over them, are beaten, saying, Wherefore have ye not completed your portion in making brick as heretofore, both yesterday and today? And the authorities of the sons of Israel come in and cry unto Pharaoh, saying, Why dost thou thus to thy servants? Straw is not given to thy servants, and they are saying to us, Make bricks, and lo, thy servants are smitten and thy people hath sinned. And he saith, Remiss, ye are remiss, therefore ye are saying, Let us go, let us sacrifice to Jehovah. And now, go, serve, and straw is not given to you, and the measure of bricks ye do give. And the authorities of the sons of Israel see them in affliction, saying, Ye do not diminish from your bricks, the matter of a day in its day. And they meet Moses and Aaron standing to meet them, in their coming out from Pharaoh. And say unto them, Jehovah look upon you, and judge, because ye have caused our fragrance to stink in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of his servants, to give a sword into their hand to slay us. And Moses turneth back unto Jehovah, and saith, Lord, why hast thou done evil to this people? Why, is, this? Thou hast sent me. And since I have come unto Pharaoh, to speak in thy name, he hath done evil to this people, 
and thou hast not at all delivered thy people. Chapter 6 And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Now dost thou see that which I do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand he doth send them away, yea, with a strong hand he doth cast them out of his land. And God speaketh unto Moses, and saith unto him, I am Jehovah. And I appear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, as God Almighty, as to my name Jehovah, I have not been known to them. And also I have established my covenant with them, to give to them the land of Canaan, the land of their sojournings, wherein they have sojourned. And also I have heard the groaning of the sons of Israel, whom the Egyptians are causing to serve, and I remember my covenant. Therefore say to the sons of Israel, I am Jehovah, and I have brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and have delivered you from their service, and have redeemed you by a stretched out arm, and by great judgments. And have taken you to me for a people, and I have been to you for God, and ye have known that I am Jehovah your God, who is bringing you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I have brought you in unto the land which I have lifted up my hand to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and have given it to you, a possession, I am Jehovah. And Moses speaketh so unto the sons of Israel, and they hearkened not unto Moses, for anguish of spirit, and for harsh service. And Jehovah speaketh unto Moses, saying, Go in, speak unto Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he doth send the sons of Israel out of his land. And Moses speaketh before Jehovah, saying, Lo, the sons of Israel have not hearkened unto me, and how doth Pharaoh hear me, and I of uncircumcised lips? And Jehovah speaketh unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and chargeth them for the sons of Israel, and for Pharaoh king of Egypt, to bring out the sons of Israel from the land of Egypt. These, are, heads of the house of their fathers, sons of Reuben firstborn of Israel, are, Hanak, and Phalu, Hezron, and Carmi, these, are, families of Reuben. And sons of Simeon, are, Jemuel, and Jamin, and Ohad, and Jachin, and Zohar, and Shal, son of the Canaanitess, these, are, families of Simeon. And these, are, the names of the sons of Levi, as to their births, Gershon, and Kohath, and Merari, and the years of the life of Levi, are, a hundred and thirty and seven years. The sons of Gershon, are, Libni, and Shimi, as to their families. And the sons of Kohath, are, Amram, and Azar, and Hebron, and Uzziel, and the years of the life of Kohath, are, a hundred and thirty and three years. And the sons of Merari, are, Mali and Mushi, these, are, families of Levi, as to their births. And Amram taketh Jochebed his aunt to himself for a wife, and she beareth to him Aaron and Moses, and the years of the life of Amram, are, a hundred and thirty and seven years. And sons of Azar, are, Korah, and Nepheg, and Zikri. And sons of Uzziel, are, Mishael, and Elzaphon, and Sithri. And Aaron taketh Elisheba daughter of Ammonadab, sister of Nashon, to himself for a wife, and she beareth to him Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. And sons of Korah, are, Asur, and Elkanah, and Abiasaph, these, are, families of the Korite. And Eleazar, Aaron's son, hath taken to him, one, of the daughters of Putiel for a wife to himself, and she beareth to him Phinehas, these, are, heads of the fathers of the Levites, as to their families. This, is, Aaron and Moses to whom Jehovah said, Bring ye out the sons of Israel from the land of Egypt, by their hosts. These are they who are speaking unto Pharaoh king of Egypt, to bring out the sons of Israel from Egypt, this, is, Moses and Aaron. And it cometh to pass in the day of Jehovah speaking unto Moses in the land of Egypt. That Jehovah speaketh unto Moses, saying, I, am, Jehovah, speak unto Pharaoh king of Egypt all that I am speaking unto thee. And Moses saith before Jehovah, Lo, I, am, of uncircumcised lips, and how doth Pharaoh hearken unto me? Chapter 7 And Jehovah saith unto Moses, See, I have given thee a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother is thy prophet. 
Thou, thou dost speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother doth speak unto Pharaoh, and he hath sent the sons of Israel out of his land. And I harden the heart of Pharaoh, and have multiplied my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh doth not hearken, and I have put my hand on Egypt, and have brought out my hosts, my people, the sons of Israel, from the land of Egypt by great judgments. And the Egyptians have known that I am Jehovah, in my stretching out my hand against Egypt, and I have brought out the sons of Israel from their midst. And Moses doth Aaron also, as Jehovah commanded them, so have they done. And Moses is a son of eighty years, and Aaron is a son of eighty and three years, in their speaking unto Pharaoh. And Jehovah speaketh unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh speaketh unto you, saying, Give for yourselves a wonder, then thou hast said unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and cast before Pharaoh, it becometh a monster. And Moses goeth in Aaron also unto Pharaoh, and they do so as Jehovah hath commanded, and Aaron casteth his rod before Pharaoh, and before his servants, and it becometh a monster. And Pharaoh also calleth for wise men, and for sorcerers, and the scribes of Egypt, they also, with their flashings, do so. And they cast down each his rod, and they become monsters, and the rod of Aaron swalloweth their rods. And the heart of Pharaoh is strong, and he hath not hearkened unto them, as Jehovah hath spoken. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, The heart of Pharaoh hath been hard, he hath refused to send the people away. Go unto Pharaoh in the morning, lo, he is going out to the water, and thou hast stood to meet him by the edge of the river, and the rod which was turned to a serpent thou dost take in thy hand. And thou hast said unto him, Jehovah, God of the Hebrews, hath sent me unto thee, saying, Send my people away, and they serve me in the wilderness, and lo, thou hast not hearkened hitherto. Thus said Jehovah, By this thou knowest that I am Jehovah, lo, I am smiting with the rod which is in my hand on the waters which are in the river, and they have been turned to blood. And the fish that are in the river die, and the river hath stank, and the Egyptians have been wearied of drinking waters from the river. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and stretch out thy hand against the waters of Egypt, against their streams, against their rivers, and against their ponds, and against all their collections of waters, and they are blood and there hath been blood in all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood, and in those of stone. And Moses and Aaron do so, as Jehovah hath commanded, and he lifteth up his hand with the rod, and smitteth the waters which are in the river before the eyes of Pharaoh, and before the eyes of his servants, and all the waters which are in the river are turned to blood. And the fish which is in the river hath died, and the river stinketh, and the Egyptians have not been able to drink water from the river, and the blood is in all the land of Egypt. And the scribes of Egypt do so with their flashings, and the heart of Pharaoh is strong, and he hath not hearkened unto them, as Jehovah hath spoken. And Pharaoh turneth and goeth in unto his house, and hath not set his heart even to this. And all the Egyptians seek water round about the river to drink, for they have not been able to drink of the waters of the river. And seven days are completed after Jehovah's smiting the river. Chapter 8 and Jehovah saith unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, and thou hast said unto him, Thus said Jehovah, Send my people away, and they serve me. And if thou art refusing to send away, lo, I am smiting all thy border with frogs. And the river hath teemed, with, frogs, and they have gone up and gone into thy house, and into the inner chamber of thy bed, and on thy couch, and into the house of thy servants, and among thy people, and into thine ovens, and into thy kneading troughs. Yea, on thee, and on thy people, and on all thy servants do the frogs go up. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy hand, with thy rod, against the streams, against the rivers, and against the ponds, and cause the frogs to come up against the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretcheth out his hand against the waters of Egypt, and the frog cometh up, and covereth the land of Egypt. And the scribes do so with their flashings, 
and cause the frogs to come up against the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh calleth for Moses and for Aaron, and Seth, Make supplication unto Jehovah, that he turn aside the frogs from me, and from my people, and I send the people away, and they sacrifice to Jehovah. And Moses saith to Pharaoh, Beautify thyself over me, when do I make supplication for thee, and for thy servants, and for thy people, to cut off the frogs from thee and from thy houses, only in the river they do remain? And he saith, Tomorrow. And he saith, According to thy word, it is, so that thou knowest that there is none like Jehovah our God. And the frogs have turned aside from thee, and from thy houses, and from thy servants, and from thy people, only in the river they do remain. And Moses, Aaron also, goeth out from Pharaoh, and Moses creeth unto Jehovah, concerning the matter of the frogs which he hath set on Pharaoh. And Jehovah doth according to the word of Moses, and the frogs die out of the houses, out of the courts, and out of the fields. And they heap them up together, and the land stinketh. And Pharaoh seeth that there hath been a respite, and he hath hardened his heart, and hath not hearkened unto them, as Jehovah hath spoken. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod, and smite the dust of the land, and it hath become gnats in all the land of Egypt. And they do so, and Aaron stretcheth out his hand with his rod, and smitteth the dust of the land, and the gnats are on man and on beast, all the dust of the land hath been gnats in all the land of Egypt. And the scribes do so with their flashings, to bring out the gnats, and they have not been able, and the gnats are on man and on beast. And the scribes say unto Pharaoh, It, is, the finger of God, and the heart of Pharaoh is strong, and he hath not hearkened unto them, as Jehovah hath spoken. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Rise early in the morning, and station thyself before Pharaoh, Lo, he is going out to the waters, and thou hast said unto him, Thus said Jehovah, Send my people away, and they serve me. For, if thou art not sending my people away, Lo, I am sending against thee, and against thy servants, and against thy people, and against thy houses, the beetle, and the houses of the Egyptians have been full of the beetle, and also the ground on which they are. And I have separated in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people are staying, that the beetle is not there, so that thou knowest that I, am, Jehovah in the midst of the land. And I have put a division between my people and thy people, tomorrow is this sign. And Jehovah doth so, and the grievous beetle entereth the house of Pharaoh, and the house of his servants, and in all the land of Egypt the land is corrupted from the presence of the beetle. And Pharaoh calleth unto Moses and to Aaron, and saith, Go, sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses saith, Not right to do so, for the abomination of the Egyptians we do sacrifice to Jehovah our God, lo, we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, and they do not stone us. A journey of three days we go into the wilderness, and have sacrificed to Jehovah our God, as he saith unto us. And Pharaoh saith, I send you away, and ye have sacrificed to Jehovah your God in the wilderness, only go not very far off, make ye supplication for me. And Moses saith, Lo, I am going out from thee, and have made supplication unto Jehovah, and the beetle hath turned aside from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people, tomorrow, only let not Pharaoh add to deceive, in not sending the people away to sacrifice to Jehovah. And Moses goeth out from Pharaoh, and mocketh supplication unto Jehovah. And Jehovah doth according to the word of Moses, and turneth aside the beetle from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people, there hath not been left one. And Pharaoh hardeneth his heart also at this time, and hath not sent the people away. Chapter 9 And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, and thou hast spoken unto him, Thus said Jehovah, God of the Hebrews, send my people away, and they serve me. For, if thou art refusing to send away, and art still keeping hold upon them. Lo, the hand of Jehovah is on thy cattle which, are, in the field, on horses, on asses, on camels, on herd, and on flock, a pestilence very grievous. And Jehovah hath separated between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and there doth not die a thing of all the sons of Israel's. 
And Jehovah setteth an appointed time, saying, Tomorrow doth Jehovah do this thing in the land. And Jehovah doth this thing on the morrow, and all the cattle of Egypt die, and of the cattle of the sons of Israel not one hath died. And Pharaoh sendeth, and lo, not even one of the cattle of Israel hath died, and the heart of Pharaoh is hard, and he hath not sent the people away. And Jehovah saith unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take to you the fullness of your hands, of, soot of a furnace, and Moses hath sprinkled it towards the heavens, before the eyes of Pharaoh. And it hath become small dust over all the land of Egypt, and it hath become on man and on cattle a boil breaking forth, with, blains, in all the land of Egypt. And they take the soot of the furnace, and stand before Pharaoh, and Moses sprinkleth it towards the heavens, and it is a boil, with, blains, breaking forth, on man and on beast. And the scribes have not been able to stand before Moses, because of the boil, for the boil hath been on the scribes, and on all the Egyptians. And Jehovah strengtheneth the heart of Pharaoh, and he hath not hearkened unto them, as Jehovah hath spoken unto Moses. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Rise early in the morning, and station thyself before Pharaoh, and thou hast said unto him, Thus said Jehovah, God of the Hebrews, Send my people away, and they serve me. For, at this time I am sending all my plagues unto thy heart, and on thy servants, and on thy people, so that thou knowest that there is none like me in all the earth. For now I have put forth my hand, and I smite thee, and thy people, with pestilence, and thou art hidden from the earth. And yet for this I have caused thee to stand, so as to show thee my power, and for the sake of declaring my name in all the earth. Still thou art exalting thyself against my people, so as not to send them away. Lo, I am reigning about, this, time tomorrow hail very grievous, such as hath not been in Egypt, even from the day of its being founded, even until now. And, now, send, strengthen thy cattle and all that thou hast in the field, every man and beast which is found in the field, and is not gathered into the house, come down on them hath the hail, and they have died. He who is fearing the word of Jehovah among the servants of Pharaoh hath caused his servants and his cattle to flee unto the houses. And he who hath not set his heart unto the word of Jehovah leaveth his servants and his cattle in the field. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Stretch forth thy hand towards the heavens, and there is hail in all the land of Egypt, on man, and on beast, and on every herb of the field in the land of Egypt. And Moses stretcheth out his rod towards the heavens, and Jehovah hath given voices and hail, and fire goeth towards the earth, and Jehovah reigneth hail on the land of Egypt. And there is hail, and fire catching itself in the midst of the hail, very grievous, such as hath not been in all the land of Egypt since it hath become a nation. And the hail smitteth in all the land of Egypt all that, is, in the field, from man even unto beast, and every herb of the field hath the hail smitten, and every tree of the field it hath broken. Only in the land of Goshen, where the sons of Israel, are, there hath been no hail. And Pharaoh sendeth, and calleth for Moses and for Aaron, and saith unto them, I have sinned this time, Jehovah, is, the righteous, and I and my people, are, the wicked. Make ye supplication unto Jehovah, and plead that there be no voices of God in hail and I send you away, and ye add not to remain. And Moses saith unto him, At my going out of the city, I spread my palms unto Jehovah, the voices cease, and the hail is not any more, so that thou knowest that the earth, is, Jehovah's. But thou and thy servants I have known that ye are not yet afraid of the face of Jehovah God. And the flax and the barley have been smitten, for the barley, is, budding, and the flax forming flowers. And the wheat and the rye have not been smitten, for they are late. And Moses goeth out from Pharaoh, from, the city, and spreadeth his hands unto Jehovah, and the voices and the hail cease, and rain hath not been poured out to the earth. And Pharaoh seeth that the rain hath ceased, and the hail and the voices, and he continueth to sin, and hardeneth his heart, he and his servants. And the heart of Pharaoh is strong, and he hath not sent the sons of Israel away, as Jehovah hath spoken by the hand of Moses. Chapter 10 And Jehovah saith unto Moses, 
Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have declared hard his heart, and the heart of his servants, so that I set these my signs in their midst. And so that thou recountest in the ears of thy son, and of thy son's son, that which I have done in Egypt, and my signs which I have set among them, and ye have known that I am Jehovah. And Moses cometh in Aaron also unto Pharaoh, and they say unto him, Thus said Jehovah, God of the Hebrews, Until when hast thou refused to be humbled at my presence? Send my people away, and they serve me. For if thou art refusing to send my people away, lo, I am bringing in tomorrow the locust into thy border. And it hath covered the eye of the land, and none is able to see the land, and it hath eaten the remnant of that which is escaped, which is left to you from the hail, and it hath eaten every tree which is springing for you out of the field. And they have filled thy houses, and the houses of all thy servants, and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither thy fathers nor thy fathers' fathers have seen, since the day of their being on the ground unto this day, and he turneth and goeth out from Pharaoh. And the servants of Pharaoh say unto him, Until when doth this, one, become a snare to us? Send the men away, and they serve Jehovah their God, knowest thou not yet that Egypt hath perished? And Moses is brought back Aaron also unto Pharaoh, and he saith unto them, Go, serve Jehovah your God, who and who, are, those going? And Moses saith, With our young ones, and with our aged ones, we go, with our sons, and with our daughters, with our flock, and our herd, we go, for we have a festival to Jehovah. And he saith unto them, Be it so, Jehovah, be, with you when I send you and your infants away, see, for evil, is, before your faces. Not so. Go now, ye who, are, men, and serve Jehovah, for that ye are seeking, and, one, casteth them out from the presence of Pharaoh. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand against the land of Egypt for the locust, and it goeth up against the land of Egypt, and doth eat every herb of the land, all that the hail hath left. And Moses stretcheth out his rod against the land of Egypt, and Jehovah hath led an east wind over the land all that day, and all the night, the morning hath been, and the east wind hath lifted up the locust. And the locust goeth up against all the land of Egypt, and resteth in all the border of Egypt, very grievous, before it there hath not been such a locust as it, and after it there is none such. And it covereth the eye of all the land, and the land is darkened, and it eateth every herb of the land, and all the fruit of the trees which the hail hath left, and there hath not been left any green thing in the trees, or in the herb of the field, in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh hasteth to call for Moses and for Aaron, and saith, I have sinned against Jehovah your God, and against you. And now, bear with, I pray you, my sin, only this time, and make ye supplication to Jehovah your God, that he turn aside from off me only this death. And he goeth out from Pharaoh, and mocketh supplication unto Jehovah. And Jehovah turneth a very strong sea wind, and it lifteth up the locust, and bloweth it into the Red Sea, there hath not been left one locust in all the border of Egypt. And Jehovah strengtheneth the heart of Pharaoh, and he hath not sent the sons of Israel away. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand towards the heavens, and there is darkness over the land of Egypt, and the darkness is felt. And Moses stretcheth out his hand towards the heavens, and there is darkness, thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They have not seen one another, and none hath risen from his place three days, and to all the sons of Israel there hath been light in their dwellings. And Pharaoh calleth unto Moses and saith, Go ye, serve Jehovah, only your flock and your herd are stayed, your infants also go with you. And Moses saith, Thou also dost give in our hand sacrifices and burnt offerings, and we have prepared for Jehovah our God. And also our cattle doth go with us, there is not left a hoof, for from it we do take to serve Jehovah our God, and we, we know not how we do serve Jehovah till our going thither. And Jehovah strengtheneth the heart of Pharaoh, and he hath not been willing to send them away. And Pharaoh saith to him, Go from me, take heed to thyself, add not to see my face, for in the day thou sayest my face thou deest. And Moses saith, Rightly hast thou spoken, 
I add not any more to see thy face. Chapter 11 And Jehovah saith unto Moses, One plague more I do bring in on Pharaoh, and on Egypt, afterwards he doth send you away from this, when he is sending you away, he surely casteth you out altogether from this place. Speak, I pray thee, in the ears of the people, and they ask each man from his neighbor, and each woman from her neighbor, vessels of silver, and vessels of gold. And Jehovah giveth the grace of the people in the eyes of the Egyptians, also the man Moses, is, very great in the land of Egypt, in the eyes of the servants of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of the people. And Moses saith, Thus said Jehovah, About midnight I am going out into the midst of Egypt. And every firstborn in the land of Egypt hath died, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who is sitting on his throne, unto the firstborn of the maid servant who, is, behind the millstones, and all the firstborn of beasts. And there hath been a great cry in all the land of Egypt, such as there hath not been, and such as there is not again. And against all the sons of Israel a dog sharpeneth not its tongue, from man even unto beast, so that ye know that Jehovah doth make a separation between the Egyptians and Israel. And all these thy servants have come down unto me, and bowed themselves to me, saying, Go out, thou and all the people who, are, at thy feet, and afterwards I do go out, and he goeth out from Pharaoh in the heat of anger. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Pharaoh doth not hearken unto you, so as to multiply my wonders in the land of Egypt. And Moses and Aaron have done all these wonders before Pharaoh, and Jehovah strengtheneth Pharaoh's heart, and he hath not sent the sons of Israel out of his land. Chapter 12 And Jehovah speaketh unto Moses and unto Aaron, in the land of Egypt, saying, This month, is, to you the chief of months, it, is, the first to you of the months of the year. Speak ye unto all the company of Israel, saying, In the tenth of this month, they take to them each man a lamb for the house of the fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too few for a lamb, then hath he taken, he and his neighbor who is near unto his house, for the number of persons, each according to his eating ye do count for the lamb. A lamb, a perfect one, a male, a son of a year, let be to you, from the sheep or from the goats ye do take, it. And it hath become a charge to you, until the fourteenth day of this month, and the whole assembly of the company of Israel have slaughtered it between the evenings. And they have taken of the blood, and have put on the two side posts, and on the lintel over the houses in which they eat it. And they have eaten the flesh in this night, roast with fire, with unleavened things and bitters they do eat it. Ye do not eat of it raw, or boiled at all in water, but roast with fire, its head with its legs, and with its inwards. And ye do not leave of it till morning, and that which is remaining of it till morning with fire ye do burn. And thus ye do eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye have eaten it in haste, it is Jehovah's Passover. And I have passed over through the land of Egypt during this night, and have smitten every firstborn in the land of Egypt, from man even unto beast, and on all the gods of Egypt I do judgments, I am Jehovah. And the blood hath become a sign for you on the houses where ye, are, and I have seen the blood, and have passed over you, and a plague is not on you for destruction in my smiting in the land of Egypt. And this day hath become to you a memorial, and ye have kept it a feast to Jehovah to your generations, a statute age during, ye keep it a feast. Seven days ye eat unleavened things, only, in the first day ye cause leaven to cease out of your houses, for any one eating anything fermented from the first day till the seventh day, even that person hath been cut off from Israel. And in the first day, is, a holy convocation, and in the seventh day ye have a holy convocation, any work is not done in them, only that which is eaten by any person, it alone is done by you. And ye have observed the unleavened things, for in this selfsame day I have brought out your hosts from the land of Egypt, and ye have observed this day to your generations a statute age during. In the first, month, in the fourteenth day of the month, in the evening, ye do eat unleavened things until the one and twentieth day of the month, at evening. Seven days leaven is not found in your houses, for any, one, eating anything fermented, that person hath been cut off from the company of Israel, 
among the sojourners or among the natives of the land. Anything fermented ye do not eat, in all your dwellings ye do eat unleavened things. And Moses calleth for all the elders of Israel, and saith unto them, Draw out and take for yourselves, from, the flock, for your families, and slaughter the Passover sacrifice. And ye have taken a bunch of hyssop, and have dipped, it, in the blood which, is, in the basin, and have struck, it, on the lintel, and on the two side posts, from the blood which, is, in the basin, and ye, ye go not out each from the opening of his house till morning. And Jehovah hath passed on to smite the Egyptians, and hath seen the blood on the lintel, and on the two side posts, and Jehovah hath passed over the opening, and doth not permit the destruction to come into your houses to smite. And ye have observed this thing, for a statute to thee, and to thy sons, unto the age. And it hath been, when ye come in unto the land which Jehovah giveth to you, as he hath spoken, that ye have kept this service. And it hath come to pass when your sons say unto you, What, is, this service ye have? That ye have said, A sacrifice of Passover it, is, to Jehovah, who passed over the houses of the sons of Israel in Egypt, in his smiting the Egyptians, and our houses he delivered. And the people bow and do obeisance, and the sons of Israel go and do as Jehovah commanded Moses and Aaron, so have they done. And it cometh to pass, at midnight, that Jehovah hath smitten every firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who is sitting on his throne, unto the firstborn of the captive who, is, in the prison house, and every firstborn of beasts. And Pharaoh riseth by night, he and all his servants, and all the Egyptians, and there is a great cry in Egypt, for there is not a house where there is not, one, dead. And he calleth for Moses and for Aaron by night, and saith, Rise, go out from the midst of my people, both ye and the sons of Israel, and go, serve Jehovah according to your word. Both your flock and your herd take ye, as ye have spoken, and go, then ye have blessed also me. And the Egyptians are urgent on the people, hasting to send them away out of the land, for they said, We are all dead. And the people taketh up its dough before it is fermented, their kneading troughs, are, bound up in their garments on their shoulder. And the sons of Israel have done according to the word of Moses, and they ask from the Egyptians vessels of silver and vessels of gold, and garments. And Jehovah hath given the grace of the people in the eyes of the Egyptians, and they cause them to ask, and they spoil the Egyptians. And the sons of Israel journey from Ramesses to Sukkis, about six hundred thousand men on foot, apart from infants. And a great rabble also hath gone up with them, and flock and herd very much cattle. And they bake with the dough which they have brought out from Egypt unleavened cakes, for it hath not fermented, for they have been cast out of Egypt, and have not been able to delay, and also provision they have not made for themselves. And the dwelling of the sons of Israel which they have dwelt in Egypt, is, four hundred and thirty years. And it cometh to pass, at the end of four hundred and thirty years, yea, it cometh to pass in this selfsame day all the hosts of Jehovah have gone out from the land of Egypt. A night of watchings it, is, to Jehovah, to bring them out from the land of Egypt, it, is, this night to Jehovah of watchings to all the sons of Israel to their generations. And Jehovah saith unto Moses and Aaron, This, is, a statute of the Passover, any son of a stranger doth not eat of it. And any man's servant, the purchase of money, when thou hast circumcised him, then he doth eat of it. A settler or hired servant doth not eat of it. In one house it is eaten, thou dost not carry out of the house, any, of the flesh without, and a bone ye do not break of it. All the company of Israel do keep it. And when a sojourner sojourneth with thee, and hath made a Passover to Jehovah, every male of his, is, to be circumcised, and then he doth come near to keep it, and he hath been as a native of the land, but any uncircumcised one doth not eat of it. One law is to a native, and to a sojourner who is sojourning in your midst. And all the sons of Israel do as Jehovah commanded Moses and Aaron, so have they done. And it cometh to pass in this selfsame day, Jehovah hath brought out the sons of Israel from the land of Egypt, by their hosts. Chapter 13
And Jehovah speaketh unto Moses, saying, Sanctify to me every firstborn, opening any womb among the sons of Israel, among man and among beast, it is mine. And Moses saith unto the people, Remember this day, in which ye have gone out from Egypt, from the house of servants, for by strength of hand hath Jehovah brought you out from this, and anything fermented is not eaten. Today ye are going out, in the month of Abib. And it hath been, when Jehovah bringeth thee in unto the land of the Canaanite, and of the Hittite, and of the Amorite, and of the Hivite, and of the Jebusite, which he hath sworn to thy fathers to give to thee, a land flowing with milk and honey, that thou hast done this service in this month. Seven days thou dost eat unleavened things, and in the seventh day, is, a feast to Jehovah. Unleavened things are eaten the seven days, and anything fermented is not seen with thee, yea, leaven is not seen with thee in all thy border. And thou hast declared to thy son in that day, saying, It is, because of what Jehovah did to me, in my going out from Egypt. And it hath been to thee for a sign on thy hand, and for a memorial between thine eyes, so that the law of Jehovah is in thy mouth, for by a strong hand hath Jehovah brought thee out from Egypt. And thou hast kept this statute at its appointed season from days to days. And it hath been, when Jehovah bringeth thee in unto the land of the Canaanite, as he hath sworn to thee and to thy fathers, and hath given it to thee. That thou hast caused every one opening a womb to pass over to Jehovah, and every firstling, the increase of beasts which thou hast, the males, are, Jehovah's. And every firstling of an ass thou dost ransom with a lamb, and if thou dost not ransom, it, then thou hast beheaded it, and every firstborn of man among thy sons thou dost ransom. And it hath been, when thy son asketh thee hereafter, saying, What, is, this? That thou hast said unto him, By strength of hand hath Jehovah brought us out from Egypt, from a house of servants. Yea, it cometh to pass, when Pharaoh hath been pained to send us away, that Jehovah doth slay every firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of man even unto the firstborn of beast, therefore I am sacrificing to Jehovah all opening a womb who, are, the males, and every firstborn of my sons I ransom. And it hath been for a token on thy hand, and for frontlets between thine eyes, for by strength of hand hath Jehovah brought us out of Egypt. And it cometh to pass in Pharaoh sending the people away, that God hath not led them the way of the land of the Philistines, for it, is, near, for God said, lest the people repent in their seeing war, and have turned back towards Egypt. And God turneth round the people the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and by fifties have the sons of Israel gone up from the land of Egypt. And Moses taketh the bones of Joseph with him, for he certainly caused the sons of Israel to swear, saying, God doth certainly inspect you, and ye have brought up my bones from this with you. And they journey from Sukkot, and encamp in Etham at the extremity of the wilderness. And Jehovah is going before them by day in a pillar of a cloud, to lead them in the way, and by night in a pillar of fire, to give light to them, to go by day and by night. He removeth not the pillar of the cloud by day, and the pillar of the fire by night, from, before the people. Chapter 14 And Jehovah speaketh unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the sons of Israel, and they turn back and encamp before Pihahirath, between Migdal and the sea, before Balzephon, over against it ye do encamp by the sea. And Pharaoh hath said of the sons of Israel, They are entangled in the land, the wilderness hath shut upon them. And I have strengthened the heart of Pharaoh, and he hath pursued after them, and I am honored on Pharaoh, and on all his force, and the Egyptians have known that I, am, Jehovah, and they do so. And it is declared to the king of Egypt that the people hath fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants is turned against the people, and they say, What, is, this we have done? That we have sent Israel away from our service. And he harnesseth his chariot, and his people he hath taken with him. And he taketh six hundred chosen chariots, even all the chariots of Egypt, and captains over them all. And Jehovah strengtheneth the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he pursueth after the sons of Israel, and the sons of Israel are going out with a high hand. And the Egyptians pursue after them, 
and all the chariot horses of Pharaoh, and his horsemen, and his force, overtake them, encamping by the sea, by Pihahirath, before Baalzephon. And Pharaoh hath drawn near, and the sons of Israel lift up their eyes, and lo, the Egyptians are journeying after them, and they fear exceedingly, and the sons of Israel cry unto Jehovah. And they say unto Moses, Because there are no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in a wilderness? What is this thou hast done to us, to bring us out from Egypt? Is not this the word which we spake unto thee in Egypt, saying, Cease from us, and we serve the Egyptians, for better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in a wilderness? And Moses saith unto the people, Fear not, station yourselves, and see the salvation of Jehovah, which he doth for you today, for, as ye have seen the Egyptians today, ye add no more to see them, to the age. Jehovah doth fight for you, and ye keep silent. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, What? Thou creest unto me, speak unto the sons of Israel, and they journey. And thou, lift up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand towards the sea, and cleave it, and the sons of Israel go into the midst of the sea on dry land. And I, lo, I am strengthening the heart of the Egyptians, and they go in after them, and I am honored on Pharaoh, and on all his force, on his chariots, and on his horsemen. And the Egyptians have known that I, am, Jehovah, in my being honored on Pharaoh, on his chariots, and on his horsemen. And the messenger of God, who is going before the camp of Israel, journeyeth and goeth at their rear, and the pillar of the cloud journeyeth from their front, and standeth at their rear. And cometh in between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and the cloud and the darkness are, and he enlighteneth the night, and the one hath not drawn near unto the other all the night. And Moses stretcheth out his hand towards the sea, and Jehovah causeth the sea to go on by a strong east wind all the night, and mocketh the sea become dry ground, and the waters are cleaved. And the sons of Israel go into the midst of the sea, on dry land, and the waters, are, to them a wall, on their right and on their left. And the Egyptians pursue, and go in after them, all the horses of Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen, unto the midst of the sea. And it cometh to pass, in the morning watch, that Jehovah looketh unto the camp of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud, and troubleth the camp of the Egyptians. And turneth aside the wheels of their chariots, and they lead them with difficulty, and the Egyptians say, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for Jehovah is fighting for them against the Egyptians. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand toward the sea, and the waters turn back on the Egyptians, on their chariots, and on their horsemen. And Moses stretcheth out his hand towards the sea, and the sea turneth back, at the turning of the morning, to its perennial flow, and the Egyptians are fleeing at its coming, and Jehovah shaketh off the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters turn back, and cover the chariots and the horsemen, even all the force of Pharaoh, who are coming in after them into the sea, there hath not been left of them even one. And the sons of Israel have gone on dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters, are, to them a wall, on their right and on their left. And Jehovah saveth Israel in that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel seeth the Egyptians dead on the seashore. And Israel seeth the great hand with which Jehovah hath wrought against the Egyptians, and the people fear Jehovah, and remain steadfast in Jehovah, and in Moses his servant. Chapter 15 Then singeth Moses and the sons of Israel this song to Jehovah, and they speak, saying, I sing to Jehovah, for triumphing he hath triumphed, the horse and its rider he hath thrown into the sea. My strength and song is Jah, and he is become my salvation, this, is, my God, and I glorify him, God of my Father, and I exalt him. Jehovah, is, a man of battle, Jehovah, is, his name. Chariots of Pharaoh and his force he hath cast into the sea, and the choice of his captains have sunk in the Red Sea. The depths do cover them, they went down into the depths as a stone. Thy right hand, O Jehovah, is become honorable in power, thy right hand, O Jehovah, doth crush an enemy. 
And in the abundance of thine excellency thou throwest down thy withstanders, thou sendest forth thy wrath, it consumeth them as stubble. And by the spirit of thine anger have waters been heaped together, stood as a heap have flowings, congealed have been depths in the heart of a sea. The enemy said, I pursue, I overtake, I apportion spoil, filled is my soul with them, I draw out my sword, my hand destroyeth them. Thou hast blown with thy wind the sea hath covered them, they sank as lead in mighty waters. Who, is, like thee among the gods, O Jehovah? Who, is, like thee, honorable in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Thou hast stretched out thy right hand, earth swalloweth them. Thou hast led forth in thy kindness the people whom thou hast redeemed. Thou hast led on in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. Peoples have heard, they are troubled, pain hath seized inhabitants of Philistia. Then have chiefs of Edom been troubled, mighty ones of Moab trembling doth seize them. Melted have all inhabitants of Canaan. Fall on them doth terror and dread, by the greatness of thine arm they are still as a stone, till thy people pass over, O Jehovah, till the people pass over whom thou hast purchased. Thou dost bring them in, and dost plant them in a mountain of thine inheritance, a fixed place for thy dwelling thou hast made, O Jehovah, a sanctuary, O Lord, thy hands have established. Jehovah reigneth to the age, and for ever. For the horse of Pharaoh hath gone in with his chariots and with his horsemen into the sea, and Jehovah turneth back on them the waters of the sea, and the sons of Israel have gone on dry land in the midst of the sea. And Miriam the inspired one, sister of Aaron, taketh the timbrel in her hand, and all the women go out after her, with timbrels and with choruses. And Miriam answereth to them, Sing ye to Jehovah, for triumphing he hath triumphed, the horse and its rider he hath thrown into the sea. And Moses causeth Israel to journey from the Red Sea, and they go out unto the wilderness of Shur, and they go three days in the wilderness, and have not found water. And they come into Mara, and have not been able to drink the waters of Mara, for they, are, bitter, therefore hath, one, called its name Mara. And the people murmur against Moses, saying, What do we drink? And he creeth unto Jehovah, and Jehovah sheweth him a tree, and he casteth unto the waters, and the waters become sweet. There he hath made for them a statute, and an ordinance, and there he hath tried them. And he saith, if thou dost really hearken to the voice of Jehovah thy God, and dost that which is right in his eyes, and hast hearkened to his commands, and kept all his statutes, none of the sickness which I laid on the Egyptians do I lay on thee, for I, Jehovah, am healing thee. And they come to Elim, and there, are, twelve fountains of water, and seventy palm trees, and they encamp there by the waters. Chapter 16 And they journey from Elim, and all the company of the sons of Israel come in unto the wilderness of Sin, which, is, between Elim and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month of their going out from the land of Egypt. And all the company of the sons of Israel murmur against Moses and against Aaron in the wilderness. And the sons of Israel say unto them, O that we had died by the hand of Jehovah in the land of Egypt, in our sitting by the fleshpot, in our eating bread to satiety, for ye have brought us out unto this wilderness to put all this assembly to death with hunger. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Lo, I am raining to you bread from the heavens, and the people have gone out and gathered the matter of a day in its day, so that I try them whether they walk in my law, or not. And it hath been on the sixth day, that they have prepared that which they bring in, and it hath been double above that which they gather day, by, day. And Moses saith Aaron also unto all the sons of Israel, Evening, and ye have known that Jehovah hath brought you out from the land of Egypt. And morning, and ye have seen the honor of Jehovah, in his hearing your murmurings against Jehovah, and what, are, we, that ye murmur against us. And Moses saith, In Jehovah's giving to you in the evening flesh to eat, and bread in the morning to satiety, in Jehovah's hearing your murmurings, which ye are murmuring against him, and what, are, we. Your murmurings, are, not against us, but against Jehovah. And Moses saith unto Aaron, Say unto all the company of the sons of Israel, Come ye near before Jehovah, for he hath heard your murmurings. 
And it cometh to pass, when Aaron is speaking unto all the company of the sons of Israel, that they turn towards the wilderness, and lo, the honor of Jehovah is seen in the cloud. And Jehovah speaketh unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the sons of Israel, speak unto them, saying, Between the evenings ye eat flesh, and in the morning ye are satisfied, with, bread, and ye have known that I, am, Jehovah your God. And it cometh to pass in the evening, that the quail cometh up, and covereth the camp, and in the morning there hath been the lying of dew round about the camp. And the lying of the dew goeth up, and lo, on the face of the wilderness a thin, bare thing, thin as hoarfrost on the earth. And the sons of Israel see, and say one unto another, What, is, it, for they have not known what it, is, and Moses saith unto them, It, is, the bread which Jehovah hath given to you for food. This, is, the thing which Jehovah hath commanded, gather of it each according to his eating, an omer for a pole, and the number of your persons, take ye each for those in his tent. And the sons of Israel do so, and they gather, he who is, gathering, much, and he who is, gathering, little. And they measure with an omer, and he who is, gathering, much hath nothing over, and he who is, gathering, little hath no lack, each according to his eating they have gathered. And Moses saith unto them, Let no man leave of it till morning. And they have not hearkened unto Moses, and some of them do leave of it till morning, and it bringeth up worms and stinketh, and Moses is wroth with them. And they gather it morning by morning, each according to his eating, when the sun hath been warm, then it hath melted. And it cometh to pass on the sixth day, they have gathered a second bread, two omers for one, and all the princes of the company come in, and declare to Moses. And he saith unto them, It, is, that which Jehovah hath spoken, of, a rest, a holy sabbath to Jehovah, is, tomorrow, that which ye bake, bake, and that which ye boil, boil, and all that is over, let rest for yourselves in charge till the morning. And they let it rest until the morning, as Moses hath commanded, and it hath not stank, and a worm hath not been in it. And Moses saith, Eat it today, for today, is, a sabbath to Jehovah, today ye find it not in the field. Six days ye do gather it, and in the seventh day the sabbath, in it there is none. And it cometh to pass on the seventh day, some of the people have gone out to gather, and have not found. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, How long have ye refused to keep my commands, and my laws? See, because Jehovah hath given to you the Sabbath, therefore he is giving to you on the sixth day bread of two days, abide ye each, in, his place, no one doth go out from his place on the seventh day. And the people rest on the seventh day. And the house of Israel call its name manna, and it, is, as coriander seed, white, and its taste, is, as a cake with honey. And Moses saith, This, is, the thing which Jehovah hath commanded, fill the omer with it, for a charge for your generations, so that they see the bread which I have caused you to eat in the wilderness, in my bringing you out from the land of Egypt. And Moses saith unto Aaron, Take one pot, and put there the fullness of the omer of manna, and let it rest before Jehovah, for a charge for your generations. As Jehovah hath given commandment unto Moses, so doth Aaron let it rest before the testimony, for a charge. And the sons of Israel have eaten the manna forty years, until their coming in unto the land to be inhabited, the manna they have eaten till their coming in unto the extremity of the land of Canaan. And the omer is a tenth of the ephah. Chapter 17 And all the company of the sons of Israel journey from the wilderness of Sin, on their journeyings, by the command of Jehovah, and encamp in Rephidim, and there is no water for the people to drink. And the people strive with Moses, and say, Give us water, and we drink. And Moses saith to them, What? Ye strive with me, what? Ye try Jehovah? And the people thirst there for water, and the people murmur against Moses, and say, Why, is, this? Thou hast brought us up out of Egypt, to put us to death, also our sons and our cattle, with thirst. And Moses creeth to Jehovah, saying, What do I to this people? Yet a little, and they have stoned me. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, 
pass over before the people, and take with thee of the elders of Israel, and thy rod with which thou hast smitten the river take in thy hand, and thou hast gone. Lo, I am standing before thee there on the rock in Horeb, and thou hast smitten on the rock, and waters have come out from it, and the people have drunk. And Moses doth so before the eyes of the elders of Israel. And he calleth the name of the place Massa, and Meribah, because of the strife of the sons of Israel, and because of their trying Jehovah, saying, Is Jehovah in our midst or not? And Amalek cometh, and fighteth with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses saith unto Joshua, Choose for us men, and go out, fight with Amalek, tomorrow I am standing on the top of the hill, and the rod of God in my hand. And Joshua doth as Moses hath said to him, to fight with Amalek, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur, have gone up, to, the top of the height. And it hath come to pass, when Moses lifteth up his hand, that Israel hath been mighty, and when he letteth his hands rest, that Amalek hath been mighty. And the hands of Moses, are, heavy, and they take a stone, and set, it, under him, and he sitteth on it, and Aaron and her have taken hold on his hands, on this side one, and on that one, and his hands are steadfast till the going in of the sun. And Joshua weakneth Amalek and his people by the mouth of the sword. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Write this, a memorial in a book, and set, it, in the ears of Joshua, that I do utterly wipe away the remembrance of Amalek from under the heavens. And Moses buildeth an altar, and calleth its name Jehovanissi. And saith, Because a hand, is, on the throne of Jah, war, is, to Jehovah with Amalek from generation, generation. Chapter 18 And Jethro priest of Midian, father-in-law of Moses, heareth all that God hath done for Moses, and for Israel his people, that Jehovah hath brought out Israel from Egypt. And Jethro, father-in-law of Moses, taketh Zipporah, wife of Moses, besides her parents. And her two sons, of whom the name of the one, is, Gershom, for he said, A sojourner I have been in a strange land. And the name of the other, is, Eliezer, for, the God of my father, is, for my help, and doth deliver me from the sword of Pharaoh. And Jethro, father-in-law of Moses, cometh, and his sons, and his wife, unto Moses, unto the wilderness where he is encamping, the mount of God. And he saith unto Moses, I, thy father-in-law, Jethro, am coming unto thee, and thy wife, and her two sons with her. And Moses goeth out to meet his father-in-law, and boweth himself, and kisseth him, and they ask one at another of welfare, and come into the tent. And Moses recounteth to his father-in-law all that Jehovah hath done to Pharaoh, and to the Egyptians, on account of Israel, all the travail which hath found them in the way, and Jehovah doth deliver them. And Jethro rejoiceth for all the good which Jehovah hath done to Israel, whom he hath delivered from the hand of the Egyptians. And Jethro saith, Blessed, is, Jehovah, who hath delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians, and from the hand of Pharaoh, who hath delivered this people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I have known that Jehovah, is, greater than all the gods, for in the thing they have acted proudly, he is, above them. And Jethro, father-in-law of Moses, taketh a burnt offering and sacrifices for God, and Aaron cometh in, and all the elders of Israel, to eat bread with the father-in-law of Moses, before God. And it cometh to pass on the morrow, that Moses sitteth to judge the people, and the people stand before Moses, from the morning unto the evening. And the father-in-law of Moses seeth all that he is doing to the people, and saith, What, is, this thing which thou art doing to the people? Wherefore art thou sitting by thyself, and all the people standing by thee from morning till evening? And Moses saith to his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to seek God. When they have a matter, it hath come unto me, and I have judged between a man and his neighbor, and made known the statutes of God, and his laws. And the father-in-law of Moses saith unto him, The thing which thou art doing, is, not good. Thou dost surely wear away, both thou, and this people which, is, with thee, for the thing is too heavy for thee, thou art not able to do it by thyself. Now, hearken to my voice, I counsel thee, 
and God is with thee, be thou for the people over against God, and thou hast brought in the things unto God. And thou hast warned them, concerning, the statutes and the laws, and hast made known to them the way in which they go, and the work which they do. And thou, thou dost provide out of all the people men of ability, fearing God, men of truth, hating dishonest gain, and hast placed, these, over them, heads of thousands, heads of hundreds, heads of fifties, and heads of tens. And they have judged the people at all times, and it hath come to pass, every great matter they bring in unto thee, and every small matter they judge themselves, and lighten it from off thyself, and they have borne with thee. If thou dost this thing, and God hath commanded thee, then thou hast been able to stand, and all this people also goeth in unto its place in peace. And Moses hearkeneth to the voice of his father-in-law, and doth all that he said. And Moses chooseth men of ability out of all Israel, and mocketh them chiefs over the people, heads of thousands, heads of hundreds, heads of fifties, and heads of tens. And they have judged the people at all times, the hard matter they bring in unto Moses, and every small matter they judge themselves. And Moses sendeth his father-in-law away, and he goeth away unto his own land. Chapter 19 In the third month of the going out of the sons of Israel from the land of Egypt, in this day they have come into the wilderness of Sinai. And they journey from Rephidim, and enter the wilderness of Sinai, and encamp in the wilderness, and Israel encampeth there before the mount. And Moses hath gone up unto God, and Jehovah calleth unto him out of the mount, saying, Thus dost thou say to the house of Jacob, and declare to the sons of Israel. Ye, ye have seen that which I have done to the Egyptians, and I bear you on eagles' wings, and bring you in unto myself. And now, if ye really hearken to my voice, then ye have kept my covenant, and been to me a peculiar treasure more than all the peoples, for all the earth, is, mine. And ye, ye are to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, these, are, the words which thou dost speak unto the sons of Israel. And Moses cometh, and calleth for the elders of the people, and setteth before them all these words which Jehovah hath commanded him. And all the people answer together and say, all that Jehovah hath spoken we do, and Moses returneth the words of the people unto Jehovah. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Lo, I am coming unto thee in the thickness of the cloud, so that the people hear in my speaking with thee, and also believe in thee to the age, and Moses declareth the words of the people unto Jehovah. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Go unto the people, and thou hast sanctified them today and tomorrow, and they have washed their garments and have been prepared for the third day, for on the third day doth Jehovah come down before the eyes of all the people, on Mount Sinai. And thou hast made a border, for, the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, going up into the mount, or coming against its extremity, whoever is coming against the mount is certainly put to death. A hand cometh not against him, for he is certainly stoned or shot through, whether beast or man it liveth not, in the drawing out of the jubilee cornet they go up into the mount. And Moses cometh down from the mount unto the people, and sanctifieth the people, and they wash their garments. And he saith unto the people, Be ye prepared for the third day, come not nigh unto a woman. And it cometh to pass, on the third day, while it is morning, that there are voices, and lightnings, and a heavy cloud, on the mount, and the sound of a trumpet very strong, and all the people who, are, in the camp do tremble. And Moses bringeth out the people to meet God from the camp, and they station themselves at the lower part of the mount. And Mount Sinai, is, holy a smoke from the presence of Jehovah, who hath come down on it in fire, and its smoke goeth up as smoke of the furnace, and the whole mount trembleth exceedingly. And the sound of the trumpet is going on, and very strong, Moses speaketh, and God doth answer him with a voice. And Jehovah cometh down on Mount Sinai, unto the top of the mount, and Jehovah calleth for Moses unto the top of the mount, and Moses goeth up. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Go down, protest to the people, lest they break through unto Jehovah to see, and many of them have fallen. And also the priests who are coming nigh unto Jehovah do sanctify themselves, lest Jehovah break forth on them. And Moses saith unto Jehovah, 
the people, is, unable to come up unto Mount Sinai, for thou, thou hast protested to us, saying, Make a border, for, the mount, then thou hast sanctified it. And Jehovah saith unto him, Go, descend, then thou hast come up, thou, and Aaron with thee, and the priests and the people do not break through, to come up unto Jehovah, lest he break forth upon them. And Moses goeth down unto the people, and saith unto them. Chapter 20 And God speaketh all these words, saying, I am Jehovah thy God, who hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of a house of servants. Thou hast no other gods before me. Thou dost not make to thyself a graven image or any likeness which, is, in the heavens above, or which, is, in the earth beneath, or which, is, in the waters under the earth. Thou dost not bow thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, Jehovah thy God, am, a zealous God, charging iniquity of fathers on sons, on the third, generation, and on the fourth, of those hating me. And doing kindness to thousands, of those loving me and keeping my commands. Thou dost not take up the name of Jehovah thy God for a vain thing, for Jehovah acquitteth not him who taketh up his name for a vain thing. Remember the Sabbath day to sanctify it. Six days thou dost labor, and hast done all thy work. And the seventh day, is, a Sabbath to Jehovah thy God, thou dost not do any work, thou, and thy son, and thy daughter, thy manservant, and thy handmaid, and thy cattle, and thy sojourner who is within thy gates. For six days hath Jehovah made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that, is, in them, and resteth in the seventh day, therefore hath Jehovah blessed the Sabbath day, and doth sanctify it. Honor thy father and thy mother, so that thy days are prolonged on the ground which Jehovah thy God is giving to thee. Thou dost not murder. Thou dost not commit adultery. Thou dost not steal. Thou dost not answer against thy neighbor a false testimony. Thou dost not desire the house of thy neighbor, thou dost not desire the wife of thy neighbor, or his manservant, or his handmaid, or his ox, or his ass, or anything which, is, thy neighbor's. And all the people are seeing the voices, and the flames, and the sound of the trumpet, and the mount smoking, and the people see, and move, and stand afar off. And say unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we hear, and let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses saith unto the people, Fear not, for to try you hath God come, and in order that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stand afar off, and Moses hath drawn nigh unto the thick darkness where God is. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Thus dost thou say unto the sons of Israel, Ye, ye have seen that from the heavens I have spoken with you. Ye do not make with me gods of silver, even gods of gold ye do not make to yourselves. An altar of earth thou dost make for me, and thou hast sacrificed on it thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings, thy flock and thy herd, in every place where I cause my name to be remembered I come in unto thee, and have blessed thee. And if an altar of stones thou dost make to me, thou dost not build them of hewn work, when thy tool thou hast waved over it, then thou dost pollute it. Neither dost thou go up by steps on mine altar, that thy nakedness be not revealed upon it. Chapter 21 And these, are, the judgments which thou dost set before them. When thou buyest a Hebrew servant, six years he doth serve, and in the seventh he goeth out as a freeman for naught. If by himself he cometh in, by himself he goeth out, if he, is, owner of a wife, then his wife hath gone out with him. If his lord give to him a wife, and she hath borne to him sons or daughters, the wife and her children are her lords, and he goeth out by himself. And if the servant really say, I have loved my lord, my wife, and my sons, I do not go out free. Then hath his lord brought him nigh unto God, and hath brought him nigh unto the door, or unto the side post, and his lord hath bored his ear with an awl, and he hath served him, to the age. And when a man selleth his daughter for a handmaid, she doth not go out according to the going out of the men servants. If evil in the eyes of her lord, so that he hath not betrothed her, 
then he hath let her be ransomed, to a strange people he hath not power to sell her, in his dealing treacherously with her. And if to his son he betroth her, according to the right of daughters he doth to her. If another, woman, he take for him, her food, her covering, and her habitation, he doth not withdraw. And if these three he do not to her, then she hath gone out for naught, without money. He who smitteth a man so that he hath died, is certainly put to death. As to him who hath not laid wait, and God hath brought to his hand, I have even set for thee a place whither he doth flee. And when a man doth presume against his neighbor to slay him with subtlety, from mine altar thou dost take him to die. And he who smitteth his father or his mother is certainly put to death. And he who stealeth a man, and hath sold him, and he hath been found in his hand, is certainly put to death. And he who is reviling his father or his mother is certainly put to death. And when men contend, and a man hath smitten his neighbor with a stone, or with the fist, and he die not, but hath fallen on the bed. If he rise, and hath gone up and down without on his staff, then hath the smiter been acquitted, only his cessation he giveth, and he is thoroughly healed. And when a man smitteth his manservant or his handmaid, with a rod, and he hath died under his hand, he is certainly avenged. Only if he remain a day, or two days, he is not avenged, for he, is, his money. And when men strive, and have smitten a pregnant woman, and her children have come out, and there is no mischief, he is certainly fined, as the husband of the woman doth lay upon him, and he hath given through the judges. And if there is mischief, then thou hast given life for life. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. Burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. And when a man smitteth the eye of his manservant, or the eye of his handmaid, and hath destroyed it, as a freeman he doth send him away for his eye. And if a tooth of his manservant or a tooth of his handmaid he knock out, as a freeman he doth send him away for his tooth. And when an ox doth gore man or woman, and they have died, the ox is certainly stoned, and his flesh is not eaten, and the owner of the ox, is, acquitted. And if the ox is, one, accustomed to gore heretofore, and it hath been testified to its owner, and he doth not watch it, and it hath put to death a man or woman, the ox is stoned, and its owner also is put to death. If atonement is laid upon him, then he hath given the ransom of his life, according to all that is laid upon him. Whether it gore a son or gore a daughter, according to this judgment it is done to him. If the ox gore a manservant or a handmaid, thirty silver shekels he doth give to their lord, and the ox is stoned. And when a man doth open a pit, or when a man doth dig a pit, and doth not cover it, and an ox or ass hath fallen thither. The owner of the pit doth repay, money he doth give back to its owner, and the dead is his. And when a man's ox doth smite the ox of his neighbor, and it hath died, then they have sold the living ox, and have its money, and also the dead one they do have. Or, it hath been known that the ox is, one, accustomed to gore heretofore, and its owner doth not watch it, he certainly repayeth ox for ox, and the dead is his. Chapter 22 When a man doth steal an ox or sheep, and hath slaughtered it or sold it, five of the herd he doth repay for the ox, and four of the flock for the sheep. If in the breaking through, the thief is found, and he hath been smitten, and hath died, there is no blood for him. If the sun hath risen upon him, blood, is, for him, he doth certainly repay, if he have nothing, then he hath been sold for his theft. If the theft is certainly found in his hand alive, whether ox, or ass, or sheep, double he repayeth. When a man depastureth a field or vineyard, and hath sent out his beast, and it hath pastured in the field of another, of, the best of his field, and the best of his vineyard, he doth repay. When fire goeth forth, and hath found thorns, and a stack, or the standing corn, or the field, hath been consumed, he who causeth the burning doth certainly repay. When a man doth give unto his neighbor silver, or vessels to keep, and it hath been stolen out of the man's house, if the thief is found, he repayeth double. If the thief is not found, then the master of the house hath been brought near unto God, whether he hath not put forth his hand against the work of his neighbor. 
For every matter of transgression, for ox, for ass, for sheep, for raiment, for any lost thing of which it is said that it is his, unto God cometh the matter of them both, he whom God doth condemn, he repayeth double to his neighbor. When a man doth give unto his neighbor an ass, or ox, or sheep, or any beast to keep, and it hath died, or hath been hurt, or taken captive, none seeing. An oath of Jehovah is between them both, that he hath not put forth his hand against the work of his neighbor, and its owner hath accepted, and he doth not repay. But if it is certainly stolen from him, he doth repay to its owner. If it is certainly torn, he bringeth it in, witness, the torn thing he doth not repay. And when a man doth ask anything, from his neighbor, and it hath been hurt or hath died, its owner not being with it, he doth certainly repay. If its owner, is, with it, he doth not repay, if it, is, a hired thing, it hath come for its hire. And when a man doth entice a virgin who, is, not betrothed, and hath lain with her, he doth certainly endow her to himself for a wife. If her father utterly refuse to give her to him, money he doth weigh out according to the dowry of virgins. A which thou dost not keep alive. Whoever leath with a beast is certainly put to death. He who is sacrificing to a god, save to Jehovah alone, is devoted. And a sojourner thou dost not oppress, nor crush him, for sojourners ye have been in the land of Egypt. Any widow or orphan ye do not afflict. If thou dost really afflict him, surely if he at all cry unto me, I certainly hear his cry. And mine anger hath burned, and I have slain you by the sword, and your wives have been widows, and your sons orphans. If thou dost lend my poor people with thee money, thou art not to him as a usurer, thou dost not lay on him usury. If thou dost at all take in pledge the garment of thy neighbor, during the going in of the sun thou dost return it to him. For it alone is his covering, it, is, his garment for his skin, wherein doth he lie down? And it hath come to pass, when he doth cry unto me, that I have heard, for I, am, gracious. God thou dost not revile, and a prince among thy people thou dost not curse. Thy fullness and thy liquids thou dost not delay, the firstborn of thy sons thou dost give to me. So thou dost to thine ox, to thy sheep, seven days it is with its dam, on the eighth day thou dost give it to me. And ye are holy men to me, and flesh torn in the field ye do not eat, to a dog ye do cast it. Chapter 23 Thou dost not lift up a vain report, thou dost not put thy hand with a wicked man to be a violent witness. Thou art not after many to evil, nor dost thou testify concerning a strife, to turn aside after many to cause, others, to turn aside. And a poor man thou dost not honor in his strife. When thou meetest thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, thou dost certainly turn it back to him. When thou sayest the ass of him who is hating thee crouching under its burden, then thou hast ceased from leaving, it, to it, thou dost certainly leave, it, with him. Thou dost not turn aside the judgment of thy needy one in his strife. From a false matter thou dost keep far off, and an innocent and righteous man thou dost not slay, for I do not justify a wicked man. And a bride thou dost not take, for the bride bindeth the open dash, eyed, and perverteth the words of the righteous. And a sojourner thou dost not oppress, and ye, ye have known the soul of the sojourner, for sojourners ye have been in the land of Egypt. And six years thou dost sow thy land, and hast gathered its increase. And the seventh thou dost release it, and hast left it, and the needy of thy people have eaten, and their leaving doth the beast of the field eat, so dost thou to thy vineyard to thine olive yard. Six days thou dost do thy work, and on the seventh day thou dost rest, so that thine ox and thine ass doth rest, and the son of thine handmaid and the sojourner is refreshed. And in all that which I have said unto you ye do take heed, and the name of other gods ye do not mention, it is not heard on thy mouth. Three times thou dost keep a feast to me in a year. The feast of unleavened things thou dost keep, seven days thou dost eat unleavened things, as I have commanded thee, at the time appointed, in, the month of Abib, for in it thou hast come forth out of Egypt, and ye do not appear, 
in, my presence empty. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy works which thou sowest in the field, and the feast of the ingathering, in the outgoing of the year, in thy gathering thy works out of the field. Three times in a year do all thy males appear before the face of the Lord Jehovah. Thou dost not sacrifice on a fermented thing the blood of my sacrifice, and the fat of my festival doth not remain till morning. The beginning of the first fruits of thy ground thou dost bring into the house of Jehovah thy God, thou dost not boil a kid in its mother's milk. Lo, I am sending a messenger before thee to keep thee in the way, and to bring thee in unto the place which I have prepared. Be watchful because of his presence, and hearken to his voice, rebel not against him, for he beareth not with your transgression, for my name, is, in his heart. For, if thou diligently hearken to his voice, and hast done all that which I speak, then I have been at enmity with thine enemies, and have distressed those distressing thee. For my messenger goeth before thee, and hath brought thee in unto the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Canaanite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, and I have cut them off. Thou dost not bow thyself to their gods, nor serve them, nor do according to their doings, but dost utterly devote them, and thoroughly break their standing pillars. And ye have served Jehovah your God, and he hath blessed thy bread and thy water, and I have turned aside sickness from thine heart. There is not a miscarrying and barren one in thy land, the number of thy days I fulfill. My terror I send before thee, and I have put to death all the people among whom thou comest, and I have given the neck of all thine enemies unto thee. And I have sent the hornet before thee, and it hath cast out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite, from before thee. I cast them not out from before thee in one year, lest the land be a desolation, and the beast of the field hath multiplied against thee. Little, by, little I cast them out from before thee, till thou art fruitful, and hast inherited the land. And I have set thy border from the Red Sea, even unto the sea of the Philistines, and from the wilderness unto the river, for I give into your hand the inhabitants of the land, and thou hast cast them out from before thee. Thou dost not make a covenant with them, and with their gods. They do not dwell in thy land, lest they cause thee to sin against me when thou servest their gods, when it becometh a snare to thee. Chapter 24 And unto Moses he said, Come up unto Jehovah, thou, and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and ye have bowed yourselves afar off. And Moses hath drawn nigh by himself unto Jehovah, and they draw not nigh, and the people go not up with him. And Moses cometh in, and recounteth to the people all the words of Jehovah, and all the judgments, and all the people answer, one voice, and say, All the words which Jehovah hath spoken we do. And Moses writeth all the words of Jehovah, and riseth early in the morning, and buildeth an altar under the hill, and twelve standing pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sendeth the youths of the sons of Israel, and they cause burnt offerings to ascend, and sacrificed sacrifices of peace offerings to Jehovah, calves. And Moses taketh half of the blood, and putteth in basins, and half of the blood hath he sprinkled on the altar. And he taketh the book of the covenant, and proclaimeth in the ears of the people, and they say, All that which Jehovah hath spoken we do, and obey. And Moses taketh the blood, and sprinkleth on the people, and saith, Lo, the blood of the covenant which Jehovah hath made with you, concerning all these things. And Moses goeth up, Aaron also, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. And they see the God of Israel, and under his feet, is, as the white work of the sapphire, and as the substance of the heavens for purity. And unto those of the sons of Israel who are near he hath not put forth his hand, and they see God, and eat and drink. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Come up unto me to the mount, and be there, and I give to thee the tables of stone, and the law, and the command, which I have written to direct them. And Moses riseth Joshua his minister also and Moses goeth up unto the mount of God. And unto the elders he hath said, Abide ye for us in this, place, until that we turn back unto you, and lo, Aaron and her, are, with you, he who hath matters doth come nigh unto them. And Moses goeth up unto the mount, and the cloud covereth the mount. 
And the honour of Jehovah doth tabernacle on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covereth it six days, and he calleth unto Moses on the seventh day from the midst of the cloud. And the appearance of the honour of Jehovah, is, as a consuming fire on the top of the mount, before the eyes of the sons of Israel. And Moses goeth into the midst of the cloud, and goeth up unto the mount, and Moses is on the mount forty days and forty nights. Chapter 25 And Jehovah speaketh unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the sons of Israel, and they take for me a heave offering, from every man whose heart impelleth him ye do take my heave offering. And this, is, the heave offering which ye take from them, gold, and silver, and brass, and blue, and purple, and scarlet, and linen, and goats, hair, and ram skins made red, and badger skins, and shittim wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for the perfume of the spices. Shoam stones, and stones for setting for an ephod, and for a breastplate. And they have made for me a sanctuary, and I have tabernacled in their midst. According to all that which I am shewing thee, the pattern of the tabernacle, and the pattern of all its vessels, even so ye do make, it. And they have made an ark of shittim wood, two cubits and a half its length, and a cubit and a half its breadth, and a cubit and a half its height. And thou hast overlaid it, with, pure gold, within and without thou dost overlay it, and thou hast made on it a ring of gold round about. And thou hast cast for it four rings of gold, and hast put, them, on its four feet, even two rings on its one side, and two rings on its second side. And thou hast made staves of shittim wood, and hast overlaid them, with, gold. And hast brought the staves into the rings on the sides of the ark, to bear the ark by them. In the rings of the ark are the staves, they are not turned aside from it. And thou hast put unto the ark the testimony which I give unto thee. And thou hast made a mercy seat of pure gold, two cubits and a half its length, and a cubit and a half its breadth. And thou hast made two cherubs of gold, beaten work dost thou make them, at the two ends of the mercy seat. And make thou one cherub at the end on this side, and one cherub at the end on that, at the mercy seat ye do make the cherubs on its two ends. And the cherubs have been spreading out wings on high, covering the mercy seat over with their wings, and their faces, are, one towards another towards the mercy seat are the faces of the cherubs. And thou hast put the mercy seat on the ark above, and unto the ark thou dost put the testimony which I give unto thee. And I have met with thee there, and have spoken with thee from off the mercy seat, from between the two cherubs, which, are, on the ark of the testimony, all that which I command thee concerning the sons of Israel. And thou hast made a table of shittim wood, two cubits its length, and a cubit its breadth, and a cubit and a half its height. And hast overlaid it, with, pure gold, and hast made for it a crown of gold round about. And hast made for it a border of a handbreadth round about, and hast made a crown of gold to its border round about. And thou hast made to it four rings of gold, and hast put the rings on the four corners, which, are, to its four feet. Over against the border are the rings for places for staves to bear the table. And thou hast made the staves of shittim wood, and hast overlaid them with gold, and the table hath been born with them. And thou hast made its dishes, and its bowls, and its covers, and its cups, with which they pour out, of pure gold thou dost make them. And thou hast put on the table bread of the presence before me continually. And thou hast made a candlestick of pure gold, of beaten work is the candlestick made, its base, and its branch, its calyxes, its knops, and its flowers are of the same. And six branches are coming out of its sides, three branches of the candlestick out of the one side, and three branches of the candlestick out of the second side. Three calyxes made like almonds in the one branch, a knop and a flower, and three calyxes made like almonds in one branch, a knop and a flower, so for the six branches which are coming out from the candlestick. And in the candlestick, are, four calyxes made like almonds, its knops and its flowers. And a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, are, 
to the six branches which are coming out of the candlestick. Their knops and their branches are of the same, all of it one beaten work of pure gold. And thou hast made it seven lamps, and, one, hath caused its lights to go up, and it hath given light over against its front. And its snuffers and its snuff dishes, are, of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold he doth make it, with all these vessels. And see thou and do, them, by their pattern which thou art shown in the mount. Chapter 26 And thou dost make the tabernacle, ten curtains of twined linen, and blue, and purple, and scarlet, with, cherubs, work of a designer, thou dost make them. The length of the one curtain, is, eight and twenty by the cubit, and the breadth of the one curtain four by the cubit, one measure, is, to all the curtains. Five of the curtains are joining one unto another, and five curtains are joining one to another. And thou hast made loops of blue upon the edge of the one curtain, at the end in the joining, and so thou makest in the edge of the outermost curtain, in the joining of the second. Fifty loops thou dost make in the one curtain, and fifty loops thou dost make in the edge of the curtain which, is, in the joining of the second, causing the loops to take hold one unto another. And thou hast made fifty hooks of gold, and hast joined the curtains one to another by the hooks, and the tabernacle hath been one. And thou hast made curtains of goats, hair, for a tent over the tabernacle, thou dost make eleven curtains. The length of the one curtain, is, thirty by the cubit, and the breadth of the one curtain four by the cubit, one measure, is, to the eleven curtains. And thou hast joined the five curtains apart, and the six curtains apart, and hast doubled the six curtains over against the front of the tent. And thou hast made fifty loops on the edge of the one curtain, the outermost in the joining, and fifty loops on the edge of the curtain which is joining the second. And thou hast made fifty hooks of brass, and hast brought in the hooks into the loops, and hast joined the tent, and it hath been one. And the superfluity in the curtains of the tent, the half of the curtain which is superfluous, hath spread over the hinder part of the tabernacle. And the cubit on this side, and the cubit on that, in the superfluity in the length of the curtains of the tent, is spread out over the sides of the tabernacle, on this and on that, to cover it. And thou hast made a covering for the tent, of ram skins made red, and a covering of badger's skins above. And thou hast made the boards for the tabernacle, of shittim wood, standing up. Ten cubits, is, the length of the board, and a cubit and a half the breadth of the one board. Two handles, are, to the one board, joined one unto another, so thou dost make for all the boards of the tabernacle. And thou hast made the boards of the tabernacle, twenty boards for the south side southward. And forty sockets of silver thou dost make under the twenty boards, two sockets under the one board for its two handles, and two sockets under the other board for its two handles. And for the second side of the tabernacle, for the north side, are, twenty boards. And there forty sockets of silver, two sockets under the one board, and two sockets under another board. And for the sides of the tabernacle westward, thou dost make six boards. And two boards thou dost make for the corners of the tabernacle in the two sides. And they are pairs beneath, and together they are pairs above its head unto the one ring, so is it for them both, they are for the two corners. And they have been eight boards, and their sockets of silver, are, sixteen sockets, two sockets under the one board, and two sockets under another board. And thou hast made bars of shittim wood, five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle. And five bars for the boards of the second side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the side of the tabernacle at the two sides, westward. And one hath caused the middle bar in the midst of the boards to reach from end unto end. And the boards thou dost overlay, with, gold, and their rings thou dost make of gold places for bars, and hast overlaid their bars with gold. And thou hast raised up the tabernacle according to its fashion which thou hast been shown in the mount. And thou hast made a veil of blue, and purple, and scarlet, and twined linen, work of a designer, he mocketh it, with, cherubs. And thou hast put it on four pillars of shittim wood, overlaid, with, gold, their pegs, are, 
of gold, on four sockets of silver. And thou hast put the veil under the hooks, and hast brought in thither within the veil the ark of the testimony, and the veil hath made a separation for you between the holy and the holy of holies. And thou hast put the mercy seat on the ark of the testimony, in the holy of holies. And thou hast set the table at the outside of the veil, and the candlestick over against the table on the side of the tabernacle southward, and the table thou dost put on the north side. And thou hast made a covering for the opening of the tent, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and twined linen, work of an embroiderer. And thou hast made for the covering five pillars of shittim, wood, and hast overlaid them, with, gold, their pegs, are, of gold, and thou hast cast for them five sockets of brass. Chapter 27 And thou hast made the altar of shittim wood, five cubits the length, and five cubits the breadth, the altar is square and three cubits its height. And thou hast made its horns on its four corners, its horns are of the same, and thou hast overlaid it, with, brass. And thou hast made its pots to remove its ashes, and its shovels, and its bowls, and its forks, and its firepans, even all its vessels thou dost make of brass. And thou hast made for it a grate of network of brass, and hast made on the net four rings of brass on its four extremities. And hast put it under the compass of the altar beneath, and the net hath been unto the middle of the altar. And thou hast made staves for the altar, staves of shit and wood, and hast overlaid them, with, brass. And the staves have been brought into the rings, and the staves have been on the two sides of the altar in bearing it. Hollow with boards thou dost make it, as it hath been shewed thee in the mount, so do they make, it. And thou hast made the court of the tabernacle, for the south side southward, hangings for the court of twined linen, a hundred by the cubit, is, the length for the one side. And its twenty pillars and their twenty sockets, are, of brass, the pegs of the pillars and their fillets, are, of silver. And so for the north side in length, hangings of a hundred, cubits, in length, and its twenty pillars and their twenty sockets, are, of brass, the pegs of the pillars and their fillets, are, of silver. And, for, the breadth of the court at the west side, are, hangings of fifty cubits, their pillars ten, and their sockets ten. And, for, the breadth of the court at the east side, eastward, are, fifty cubits. And the hangings at the side, are, fifteen cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. And at the second side, are, hangings fifteen, cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. And for the gate of the court a covering of twenty cubits, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and twined linen, work of an embroiderer, their pillars four, their sockets four. All the pillars of the court round about, are, filleted, with, silver, their pegs, are, silver, and their sockets brass. The length of the court, is, a hundred by the cubit, and the breadth fifty by fifty, and the height five cubits, of twined linen, and their sockets, are, brass. Even all the vessels of the tabernacle, in all its service, and all its pins, and all the pins of the court, are, brass. And thou, thou dost command the sons of Israel, and they bring unto thee pure beaten olive oil for the light, to cause the lamp to go up continually. In the tent of meeting, at the outside of the veil, which, is, over the testimony, doth Aaron, his sons, also, arrange it from evening till morning before Jehovah, a statute age during to their generations, from the sons of Israel. Chapter 28 And thou, bring thou near unto thee Aaron thy brother, and his sons with him, from the midst of the sons of Israel, for his being priest to me, even, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eliezer and Ithamar, sons of Aaron. And thou hast made holy garments for Aaron thy brother, for honour and for beauty. And thou, thou dost speak unto all the wise of heart, whom I have filled, with, a spirit of wisdom, and they have made the garments of Aaron to sanctify him for his being priest to me. And these, are, the garments which they make, a breastplate, and an ephod, and an upper robe, and an embroidered coat, a mitre, and a girdle, yea, they have made holy garments for Aaron thy brother, and for his sons, for his being priest to me. 
and they take the gold, and the blue, and the purple, and the scarlet, and the linen. And have made the ephod of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and twined linen, work of a designer. It hath two shoulders joining at its two ends, and it is joined. And the girdle of his ephod which, is, on him, according to its work, is of the same, of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and twined linen. And thou hast taken the two shoam stones, and hast opened on them the names of the sons of Israel. Six of their names on the one stone, and the names of the remaining six on the second stone, according to their births. The work of an engraver in stone, openings of a signet, thou dost open the two stones by the names of the sons of Israel, turned round, embroidered, with, gold, thou dost make them. And thou hast set the two stones on the shoulders of the ephod, stones of memorial to the sons of Israel and Aaron hath borne their names before Jehovah, on his two shoulders, for a memorial. And thou hast made embroidered things of gold. And two chains of pure gold, wreathed work thou dost make them, work of thick bands, and thou hast put the thick chains on the embroidered things. And thou hast made a breastplate of judgment, work of a designer, according to the work of the ephod thou dost make it, of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and twined linen thou dost make it. It is square, doubled, a span its length, and a span its breadth. And thou hast set in its settings of stone, four rows of stone, a row of sardius, topaz, and carbuncle, is, the first row. And the second row, is, emerald, sapphire, and diamond. And the third row, is, opal, agate, and amethyst. And the fourth row, is, beryl, and onyx, and jasper, embroidered with gold are they in their settings. And the stones are according to the names of the sons of Israel, twelve, according to their names, openings of a signet, each by his name are they for the twelve tribes. And thou hast made on the breastplate wreathed chains, work of thick bands, of pure gold. And thou hast made on the breastplate two rings of gold, and hast put the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. And thou hast put the two thick bands of gold on the two rings at the ends of the breastplate. And the two ends of the two thick bands thou dost put on the two embroidered things, and thou hast put, them, on the shoulders of the ephod over against its face. And thou hast made two rings of gold, and hast set them on the two ends of the breastplate, on its border, which, is, over against the ephod within. And thou hast made two rings of gold, and hast put them on the two shoulders of the ephod, beneath, over against its front, over against its joining, above the girdle of the ephod. And they bind the breastplate by its rings unto the rings of the ephod with a ribbon of blue, to be above the girdle of the ephod, and the breastplate is not loosed from the ephod. And Aaron hath borne the names of the sons of Israel in the breastplate of judgment, on his heart, in his going in unto the sanctuary, for a memorial before Jehovah continually. And thou hast put unto the breastplate of judgment the lights and the perfections, and they have been on the heart of Aaron, in his going in before Jehovah, and Aaron hath borne the judgment of the sons of Israel on his heart before Jehovah continually. And thou hast made the upper robe of the ephod completely of blue. And the opening for its head hath been in its midst, a border is to its opening round about, work of a weaver, as the opening of a habergeon there is to it, it is not rent. And thou hast made on its hem pomegranates of blue, and purple, and scarlet, on its hem round about, and bells of gold in their midst round about. A bell of gold and a pomegranate, a bell of gold and a pomegranate, are, on the hems of the upper robe round about. And it hath been on Aaron to minister in, and its sound hath been heard in his coming in unto the sanctuary before Jehovah, and in his going out, and he doth not die. And thou hast made a flower of pure gold, and hast opened on it openings of a signet holy to Jehovah. And thou hast put it on a blue ribbon, and it hath been on the mitre, over against the front of the mitre it is. And it hath been on the forehead of Aaron, and Aaron hath borne the iniquity of the holy things which the sons of Israel do hallow, even all their holy gifts, and it hath been on his forehead continually for a pleasing thing for them before Jehovah. And thou hast embroidered the coat of linen, and hast made a mitre of linen, and a girdle thou dost make, work of an embroiderer. 
And for the sons of Aaron thou dost make coats, and thou hast made for them girdles, yea, bonnets thou dost make for them, for honour and for beauty. And thou hast clothed Aaron thy brother with them, and his sons with him, and hast anointed them, and hast consecrated their hand, and hast sanctified them, and they have been priests to me. And make thou for them linen trousers to cover the naked flesh, they are from the loins even unto the thighs. And they have been on Aaron and on his sons, in their going in unto the tent of meeting, or in their drawing nigh unto the altar to minister in the sanctuary, and they do not bear iniquity nor have they died, a statute age during to him, and to his seed after him. Chapter 29 And this, is, the thing which thou dost to them, to hallow them, for being priests to me, take one bullock, a son of the herd, and two rams, perfect ones. And bread unleavened, and cakes unleavened anointed with oil, of fine wheaten flour thou dost make them. And thou hast put them on one basket, and hast brought them near in the basket, also the bullock and the two rams. And Aaron and his sons thou dost bring near unto the opening of the tent of meeting, and hast bathed them with water. And thou hast taken the garments, and hast clothed Aaron with the coat, and the upper robe of the ephod, and the ephod, and the breastplate, and hast girded him with the girdle of the ephod. And hast set the mitre on his head, and hast put the holy crown on the mitre. And hast taken the anointing oil, and hast poured, it, on his head, and hast anointed him. And his sons thou dost bring near, and hast clothed them, with, coats. And hast girded them, with, a girdle, Aaron and his sons, and hast bound on them bonnets, and the priesthood hath been theirs by a statute age during, and thou hast consecrated the hand of Aaron, and the hand of his sons. And hast brought near the bullock before the tent of meeting, and Aaron hath laid his sons also, their hands on the head of the bullock. And thou hast slaughtered the bullock before Jehovah, at the opening of the tent of meeting. And hast taken of the blood of the bullock, and hast put, it, on the horns of the altar with thy finger, and all the blood thou dost pour out at the foundation of the altar. And thou hast taken all the fat which is covering the inwards, and the redundance on the liver, and the two kidneys, and the fat which, is, on them, and hast made perfume on the altar. And the flesh of the bullock, and his skin, and his dung, thou dost burn with fire at the outside of the camp, it, is, a sin offering. And the one ram thou dost take, and Aaron and his sons have laid their hands on the head of the ram. And thou hast slaughtered the ram, and hast taken its blood, and hast sprinkled, it, on the altar round about. And the ram thou dost cut into its pieces, and hast washed its inwards, and its legs, and hast put, them, on its pieces, and on its head. And thou hast made perfume with the whole ram on the altar. It, is, a burnt offering to Jehovah, a sweet fragrance, a fire offering it, is, to Jehovah. And thou hast taken the second ram, and Aaron hath laid his sons also, their hands on the head of the ram. And thou hast slaughtered the ram, and hast taken of its blood, and hast put on the tip of the right ear of Aaron, and on the tip of the right ear of his sons, and on the thumb of their right hand, and on the great toe of their right foot, and hast sprinkled the blood on the altar round about. And thou hast taken of the blood which, is, on the altar, and of the anointing oil, and hast sprinkled on Aaron, and on his garments, and on his sons, and on the garments of his sons with him, and he hath been hallowed, he, and his garments, and his sons, and the garments of his sons with him. And thou hast taken from the ram the fat, and the fat tail, and the fat which is covering the inwards, and the redundance on the liver, and the two kidneys, and the fat which, is, on them, and the right leg, for it, is, a ram of consecration. And one round cake of bread, and one cake of oiled bread, and one thin cake out of the basket of the unleavened things which, is, before Jehovah. And thou hast set the whole on the hands of Aaron, and on the hands of his sons, and hast waved them, a wave offering before Jehovah. And thou hast taken them out of their hand, and hast made perfume on the altar beside the burnt offering, for sweet fragrance before Jehovah, a fire offering it, is, to Jehovah. And thou hast taken the breast from the ram of the consecration which, is, for Aaron, and hast waved it, a wave offering before Jehovah, 
and it hath become thy portion. And thou hast sanctified the breast of the wave offering, and the leg of the heave offering, which hath been waved, and which hath been lifted up from the ram of the consecration, of that which, is, for Aaron, and of that which, is, for his sons. And it hath been for Aaron and for his sons, by a statute age during from the sons of Israel, for it, is, a heave offering, and it is a heave offering from the sons of Israel, from the sacrifices of their peace offerings, their heave offering to Jehovah. And the holy garments which are Aaron's, are for his sons after him, to be anointed in them, and to consecrate in them their hand. Seven days doth the priest in his stead, of his sons, put them on, when he goeth in unto the tent of meeting, to minister in the sanctuary. And the ram of the consecration thou dost take, and hast boiled its flesh in the holy place. And Aaron hath eaten his sons also the flesh of the ram, and the bread which, is, in the basket, at the opening of the tent of meeting. And they have eaten those things by which there is atonement to consecrate their hand, to sanctify them, and a stranger doth not eat, for they, are, holy. And if there be left of the flesh of the consecration or of the bread till the morning, then thou hast burned that which is left with fire, it is not eaten, for it, is, holy. And thou hast done thus to Aaron and to his sons, according to all that I have commanded thee, seven days thou dost consecrate their hand. And a bullock, a sin offering, thou dost prepare daily for the atonements, and thou hast atoned for the altar, in thy making atonement on it, and hast anointed it to sanctify it. Seven days thou dost make atonement for the altar, and hast sanctified it, and the altar hath been most holy, all that is coming against the altar is holy. And this, is, that which thou dost prepare on the altar, two lambs, sons of a year, daily continually. The one lamb thou dost prepare in the morning, and the second lamb thou dost prepare between the evenings. And a tenth, deal, of fine flour, mixed with beaten oil, a fourth part of a hin, and a libation, a fourth part of a hin, of wine, is, for the one lamb. And the second lamb thou dost prepare between the evenings, according to the present of the morning, and according to its libation, thou dost prepare for it, for sweet fragrance, a fire offering, to Jehovah. A continual burnt offering for your generations, at the opening of the tent of meeting, before Jehovah, whither I am met with you, to speak unto thee there. And I have met there with the sons of Israel, and it hath been sanctified by my honor. And I have sanctified the tent of meeting, and the altar, and Aaron and his sons I sanctify for being priests to me. And I have tabernacled in the midst of the sons of Israel, and have become their God. And they have known that I, am, Jehovah their God, who hath brought them out of the land of Egypt, that I may tabernacle in their midst, I, am, Jehovah their God. Chapter 30 And thou hast made an altar, for, making perfume, of, Shittim would thou dost make it. A cubit its length, and a cubit its breadth, it is square, and two cubits its height, its horns, are, of the same. And thou hast overlaid it with pure gold, its top, and its sides round about, and its horns, and thou hast made to it a crown of gold round about. And two rings of gold thou dost make to it under its crown, on its two ribs thou dost make, them, on its two sides, and they have become places for staves, to bear it with them. And thou hast made the staves of Shittim wood, and hast overlaid them with gold. And thou hast put it before the veil, which, is, by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat which, is, over the testimony, whither I am met with thee. And Aaron hath made perfume on it, perfume of spices, morning by morning, in his making the lamps right he doth perfume it. And in Aaron's causing the lamps to go up between the evenings, he doth perfume it, a continual perfume before Jehovah to your generations. Ye do not cause strange perfume to go up upon it, and burnt offering, and present, and libation ye do not pour out on it. And Aaron hath made atonement on its horns, once in a year, by the blood of the sin offering of atonements, once in a year doth he make atonement for it, to your generations, it, is, most holy to Jehovah. And Jehovah speaketh unto Moses, saying, When thou takest up the sum of the sons of Israel for their numbers, then they have given each an atonement, 
for, his soul to Jehovah in their being numbered, and there is no plague among them in their being numbered. This they do give, every one passing over unto those numbered, half a shekel, by the shekel of the sanctuary, the shekel, is, twenty giras, half a shekel, is, the heave offering to Jehovah. Every one passing over unto those numbered, from a son of twenty years and upwards, doth give the heave offering of Jehovah. The rich doth not multiply, and the poor doth not diminish from the half shekel, to give the heave offering of Jehovah, to make atonement for your souls. And thou hast taken the atonement money from the sons of Israel, and hast given it for the service of the tent of meeting, and it hath been to the sons of Israel for a memorial before Jehovah, to make atonement for your souls. And Jehovah speaketh unto Moses, saying, And thou hast made a laver of brass, and its base of brass, for washing, and thou hast put it between the tent of meeting and the altar, and hast put water there. And Aaron and his sons have washed at it their hands and their feet. In their going in unto the tent of meeting they wash, with, water, and die not, or in their drawing nigh unto the altar to minister, to perfume a fire offering to Jehovah. Then they have washed their hands and their feet, and they die not, and it hath been to them a statute age during, to him and to his seed to their generations. And Jehovah speaketh unto Moses, saying, And thou, take to thyself principal spices, wild honey five hundred, shekels, and spice cinnamon, the half of that, two hundred and fifty, and spice cane two hundred and fifty. And Kasha five hundred, by the shekel of the sanctuary, and olive oil a hin. And thou hast made it a holy anointing oil, a compound mixture, work of a compounder, it is a holy anointing oil. And thou hast anointed with it the tent of meeting, and the ark of the testimony. And the table and all its vessels, and the candlestick and its vessels, and the altar of perfume. And the altar of burnt offering and all its vessels, and the laver and its base. And thou hast sanctified them, and they have been most holy, all that is coming against them is holy. And Aaron and his sons thou dost anoint, and hast sanctified them for being priests to me. And unto the sons of Israel thou dost speak, saying, A holy anointing oil is this to me, to your generations. On flesh of man it is not poured, and with its proper proportion ye make none like it, it, is, holy, it is holy to you. A man who compoundeth, any, like it, or who putteth of it on a stranger, hath even been cut off from his people. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Take to thee spices, stacti, and onica, and galbanum, spices and pure frankincense, they are part for part. And thou hast made it a perfume, a compound, work of a compounder, salted, pure, holy. And thou hast beaten, some, of it small, and hast put of it before the testimony, in the tent of meeting, whither I am met with thee, most holy it is to you. As to the perfume which thou makest, with its proper proportion ye do not make to yourselves, holy it is to thee to Jehovah. A man who mocketh, any, like it, to be refreshed by it, hath even been cut off from his people. Chapter 31 And Jehovah speaketh unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezaleel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I fill him, with, the Spirit of God, in wisdom, and in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all work. To devise devices to work in gold, and in silver, and in brass. And engraving of stone for settings, and engraving of wood to work in all work. And I, lo, I have given with him Aholiab, son of Ahizamach, of the tribe of Dan, and in the heart of every wise-hearted one I have given wisdom, and they have made all that which I have commanded thee. The tent of meeting, and the ark of testimony, and the mercy seat which, is, on it, and all the vessels of the tent. And the table and its vessels, and the pure candlestick and all its vessels, and the altar of the perfume. And the altar of the burnt offering and all its vessels, and the laver and its base. And the colored garments, and the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons, for acting as priests in. And the anointing oil, and the perfume of the spices for the sanctuary, according to all that I have commanded thee, they do. And Jehovah speaketh unto Moses, saying, 
And thou, speak unto the sons of Israel, saying, Only, my Sabbaths ye do keep, for it, is, a sign between me and you, to your generations, to know that I, Jehovah, am sanctifying you. And ye have kept the Sabbath, for it, is, holy to you, he who is polluting it is certainly put to death for any who doeth work in it, that person hath even been cut off from the midst of his people. Six days is work done, and in the seventh day, is, a Sabbath of holy rest to Jehovah, any who doeth work in the Sabbath day is certainly put to death. And the sons of Israel have observed the Sabbath, to keep the Sabbath to their generations, is, a covenant age during. Between me and the sons of Israel it, is, a sign, to the age, for six days Jehovah made the heavens and the earth, and in the seventh day he hath ceased, and is refreshed. And he giveth unto Moses, when he finisheth speaking with him in Mount Sinai, two tables of the testimony, tables of stone, written by the finger of God. Chapter 32 And the people see that Moses is delaying to come down from the mount, and the people assemble against Aaron, and say unto him, Rise, make for us gods who go before us, for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we have not known what hath happened to him. And Aaron saith unto them, Break off the rings of gold which, are, in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring in unto me. And all the people themselves break off the rings of gold which, are, in their ears, and bring in unto Aaron. And he receiveth from their hand, and doth fashion it with a graving tool, and doth make it a molten calf, and they say, These thy gods, O Israel, who brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And Aaron seeth, and buildeth an altar before it, and Aaron calleth, and saith, A festival to Jehovah, to morrow. And they rise early on the morrow, and cause burnt offerings to ascend, and bring nigh peace offerings, and the people sit down to eat and to drink, and rise up to play. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Go, descend, for thy people whom thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt hath done corruptly. They have turned aside hastily from the way that I have commanded them, they have made for themselves a molten calf, and bow themselves to it, and sacrifice to it, and say, These thy gods, O Israel who brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, I have seen this people, and lo, it, is, a stiff-necked people. And now, let me alone, and my anger doth burn against them, and I consume them, and I make thee become a great nation. And Moses appeaseth the face of Jehovah his God, and saith, Why, O Jehovah, doth thine anger burn against thy people? whom thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a strong hand? Why do the Egyptians speak, saying, For evil he brought them out to slay them among mountains, and to consume them from off the face of the ground? Turn back from the heat of thine anger, and repent of the evil against thy people. Be mindful of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Israel, thy servants, to whom thou hast sworn by thyself, and unto whom thou speakest, I multiply your seed as stars of the heavens, and all this land, as I have said, I give to your seed, and they have inherited to the age. And Jehovah repenteth of the evil which he hath spoken of doing to his people. And Moses turneth, and goeth down from the mount, and the two tables of the testimony, are, in his hand, tables written on both their sides, on this and on that, are, they written. And the tables are the work of God and the writing is the writing of God, graven on the tables. And Joshua heareth the voice of the people in their shouting, and saith unto Moses, A noise of battle in the camp. And he saith, It is not the voice of the crying of might, nor is it the voice of the crying of weakness, a voice of singing I am hearing. And it cometh to pass, when he hath drawn near unto the camp, that he seeth the calf, and the dancing, and the anger of Moses burneth, and he casteth out of his hands the tables, and breaketh them under the mount. And he taketh the calf which they have made, and burneth, it, with fire, and grindeth until, it is, small, and scattereth on the face of the waters, and causeth the sons of Israel to drink. And Moses saith unto Aaron, What hath this people done to thee, that thou hast brought in upon it a great sin? And Aaron saith, Let not the anger of my Lord burn. Thou, thou hast known the people that it, is, in evil. And they say to me, Make for us gods, who
who go before us, for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we have not known what hath happened to him. And I say to them, Whoso hath gold, let them break, it, off, and they give to me, and I cast it into the fire, and this calf cometh out. And Moses seeth the people that it, is, unbridled, for Aaron hath made it unbridled for contempt among its withstanders. And Moses standeth in the gate of the camp, and saith, Who, is, for Jehovah? Unto me, and all the sons of Levi are gathered unto him. And he saith to them, Thus said Jehovah, God of Israel, Put each his sword by his thigh, Pass over and turn back from gate to gate through the camp, And slay each his brother, and each his friend, and each his relation. And the sons of Levi do according to the word of Moses, and there fall of the people on that day about three thousand men. And Moses saith, Consecrate your hand today to Jehovah, for a man, is, against his son, and against his brother, so as to bring on you today a blessing. And it cometh to pass, on the morrow, that Moses saith unto the people, Ye, ye have sinned a great sin, and now I go up unto Jehovah, if so be I atone for your sin. And Moses turneth back unto Jehovah, and saith, O oh, this people hath sinned a great sin, that they make to themselves a god of gold. And now, if thou takest away their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Whoso hath sinned against me, I blot him out of my book. And now, go, lead the people whithersoever I have spoken to thee of, lo, my messenger goeth before thee, and in the day of my charging, then I have charged upon them their sin. And Jehovah plagueth the people, because they made the calf which Aaron made. Chapter 33 And Jehovah speaketh unto Moses, Go, ascend from this, place, thou and the people, whom thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I have sworn to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, To thy seed I give it. And I have sent before thee a messenger, and have cast out the Canaanite, the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Unto a land flowing with milk and honey, for I do not go up in thy midst, for thou, art, a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. And the people hear this sad thing, and mourn, and none put his ornaments on him. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Say unto the sons of Israel, Ye, are, a stiff-necked people, one moment I come up into thy midst, and have consumed thee, and now, put down thine ornaments from off thee, and I know what I do to thee. And the sons of Israel take off their ornaments at Mount Horeb. And Moses taketh the tent, and hath stretched it out at the outside of the camp, afar off from the camp, and hath called it, Tent of Meeting, and it hath come to pass, every one seeking Jehovah goeth out unto the tent of meeting, which, is, at the outside of the camp. And it hath come to pass, at the going out of Moses unto the tent, all the people rise, and have stood, each at the opening of his tent, and have looked expectingly after Moses, until his going into the tent. And it hath come to pass, at the going in of Moses to the tent, the pillar of the cloud cometh down, and hath stood at the opening of the tent, and he hath spoken with Moses. And all the people have seen the pillar of the cloud standing at the opening of the tent, and all the people have risen and bowed themselves, each at the opening of his tent. And Jehovah hath spoken unto Moses face unto face, as a man speaketh unto his friend, and he hath turned back unto the camp, and his minister Joshua, son of Nun, a youth, departeth not out of the tent. And Moses saith unto Jehovah, See, thou art saying unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not caused me to know whom thou dost send with me, and thou hast said, I have known thee by name, and also thou hast found grace in mine eyes. And now, if, I pray thee, I have found grace in thine eyes, cause me to know, I pray thee, thy way, and I know thee, so that I find grace in thine eyes, and consider that this nation, is, thy people. And he saith, My presence doth go, and I have given rest to thee. And he saith unto him, If thy presence is not going, take us not up from this, place. And in what is it known now, that I have found grace in thine eyes, I and thy people, is it not in thy going with us? And we have been distinguished, I and thy people, from all the people who, are, on the face of the ground. 
And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Even this thing which thou hast spoken I do, for thou hast found grace in mine eyes, and I know thee by name. And he saith, Shew me, I pray thee, thine honour. And he saith, I cause all my goodness to pass before thy face, and have called concerning the name of Jehovah before thee, and favoured him whom I favour, and loved him whom I love. He saith also, Thou art unable to see my face, for man doth not see me, and live. Jehovah also saith, Lo, a place, is, by me, and thou hast stood on the rock. And it hath come to pass, in the passing by of mine honour, that I have set thee in a cleft of the rock, and spread out my hands over thee, until my passing by. And I have turned aside my hands, and thou hast seen my back parts, and my face is not seen. Chapter 34 And Jehovah saith unto Moses, HEW for thyself two tables of stone like the first, and I have written on the tables the words which were on the first tables which thou hast broken. And be prepared at morning, and thou hast come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and hast stood before me there, on the top of the mount. And no man cometh up with thee, and also no man is seen in all the mount, also the flock and the herd do not feed over against that mount. And he heweth two tables of stone like the first, and Moses riseth early in the morning, and goeth up unto Mount Sinai, as Jehovah commanded him, and he taketh in his hand two tables of stone. And Jehovah cometh down in a cloud, and stationeth himself with him there, and calleth in the name of Jehovah. And Jehovah passeth over before his face, and calleth, Jehovah, Jehovah God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abundant in kindness and truth. Keeping kindness for thousands, taking away iniquity, and transgression, and sin, and not entirely acquitting, charging iniquity of fathers on children, and on children's children, on a third, generation, and on a fourth. And Moses hasteth, and boweth to the earth, and doth obeisance. And saith, If, I pray thee, I have found grace in thine eyes, O my Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go in our midst, for it, is, a stiff-necked people, and thou hast forgiven our iniquity in our sin, and hast inherited us. And he saith, Lo, I am making a covenant, before all thy people I do wonders, which have not been done in all the earth, or in any nation, and all the people in whose midst thou, art, have seen the work of Jehovah, for it, is, fearful that which I am doing with thee. Observe for thyself that which I am commanding thee today, lo, I am casting out from before thee the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitant of the land into which thou art going, lest it become a snare in thy midst. For their altars ye break down, and their standing pillars ye shiver, and its shrines ye cut down. For ye do not bow yourselves to another god, for Jehovah, whose name, is, Zealous, is a zealous god. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitant of the land, and they have gone a-whoring after their gods, and have sacrificed to their gods, and, one, hath called to thee, and thou hast eaten of his sacrifice. And thou hast taken of their daughters to thy sons, and their daughters have gone a-whoring after their gods, and have caused thy sons to go a-whoring after their gods. A molten god thou dost not make to thyself. The feast of unleavened things thou dost keep, seven days thou dost eat unleavened things, as I have commanded thee, at an appointed time, the month of Abib, for in the month of Abib thou didst come out from Egypt. All opening a womb, are, mine, and every firstling of thy cattle born a male, ox or sheep. And the firstling of an ass thou dost ransom with a lamb, and if thou dost not ransom, then thou hast beheaded it, every firstborn of thy sons thou dost ransom, and they do not appear before me empty. Six days thou dost work, and on the seventh day thou dost rest, in ploughing time and in harvest thou dost rest. And a feast of weeks thou dost observe for thyself, first fruits of wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering, at the revolution of the year. Three times in a year do all thy males appear before the Lord Jehovah, God of Israel. For I dispossess nations from before thee, and have enlarged thy border, and no man doth desire thy land in thy going up to appear before Jehovah thy God three times in a year.
Thou dost not slaughter with a fermented thing the blood of my sacrifice, and the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover doth not remain till morning. The first of the firstfruits of the land thou dost bring into the house of Jehovah thy God, thou dost not boil a kid in its mother's milk. And Jehovah saith unto Moses, Write for thyself these words, for, according to the tenor of these words I have made with thee a covenant, and with Israel. And he is there with Jehovah forty days and forty nights, bread he hath not eaten, and water he hath not drunk, and he writeth on the tables the matters of the covenant, the ten matters. And it cometh to pass, when Moses is coming down from Mount Sinai, and the two tables of the testimony, are, in the hand of Moses in his coming down from the mount, that Moses hath not known that the skin of his face hath shown in his speaking with him. And Aaron seeth all the sons of Israel also Moses, and lo, the skin of his face hath shown, and they are afraid of coming nigh unto him. And Moses calleth unto them, and Aaron and all the princes in the company return unto him, and Moses speaketh unto them. And afterwards have all the sons of Israel come nigh, and he chargeth them with all that Jehovah hath spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And Moses finisheth speaking with them, and putteth on his face a veil. And in the going in of Moses before Jehovah to speak with him, he turneth aside the veil until his coming out, and he hath come out and hath spoken unto the sons of Israel that which he is commanded. And the sons of Israel have seen the face of Moses that the skin of the face of Moses hath shown, and Moses hath put back the veil on his face until his going in to speak with him. Chapter 35 And Moses assembleth all the company of the sons of Israel, and saith unto them, These, are, the things which Jehovah hath commanded, to do them. Six days is work done, and on the seventh day there is to you a holy, day, a Sabbath of rest to Jehovah, any who doeth work in it is put to death. Ye do not burn a fire in any of your dwellings on the Sabbath day. And Moses speaketh unto all the company of the sons of Israel, saying, This, is, the thing which Jehovah hath commanded, saying, Take ye from among you a heave offering to Jehovah, every one whose heart, is, willing doth bring it, the heave offering of Jehovah, gold, and silver, and brass, and blue, and purple, and scarlet, and linen, and goats, hair, and ram skins made red, and badger skins, and shittim wood, and oil for the light, and spices for the anointing oil, and for the spice perfume, and shoam stones, and stones for settings, for an ephod, and for a breastplate. And all the wise-hearted among you come in, and make all that Jehovah hath commanded. The tabernacle, its tent, and its covering, its hooks, and its boards, its bars, its pillars, and its sockets. The ark and its staves, the mercy seat, and the veil of the covering. The table and its staves, and all its vessels, and the bread of the presence. And the candlestick for the light, and its vessels, and its lamps, and the oil for the light. And the altar of perfume, and its staves, and the anointing oil, and the spice perfume, and the covering of the opening at the opening of the tabernacle. The altar of burnt offering and the brazen grate which it hath, its staves, and all its vessels, the laver and its base. The hangings of the court, its pillars, and their sockets, and the covering of the gate of the court. The pins of the tabernacle, and the pins of the court, and their cords. The colored garments, to do service in the sanctuary, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons to act as priest in. And all the company of the sons of Israel go out from the presence of Moses. And they come in, every man whom his heart hath lifted up, and every one whom his spirit hath made willing, they have brought in the heave offering of Jehovah for the work of the tent of meeting, and for all its service, and for the holy garments. And they come in, the men with the women every willing-hearted one, they have brought in nose ring, an ear ring, and seal ring, and necklace, all golden goods, even every one who hath waved a wave offering of gold to Jehovah. And every man with whom hath been found blue, and purple, and scarlet, and linen, and goats, hair, and ram skins made red, and badger skins, have brought them in. Every one lifting up a heave offering of silver and brass have brought in the heave offering of Jehovah, 
and every one with whom hath been found shit in wood for any work of the service brought, it, in. And every wise-hearted woman hath spun with her hands, and they bring in yarn, the blue, and the purple, the scarlet, and the linen. And all the women whose heart hath lifted them up in wisdom, have spun the goats, hair. And the princes have brought in the shoam stones, and the stones for settings, for the ephod, and for the breastplate. And the spices, and the oil for the light, and for the anointing oil, and for the spice perfume. Every man and woman, whom their heart hath made willing to bring in for all the work which Jehovah commanded to be done by the hand of Moses, of, the sons of Israel brought in a willing offering to Jehovah. And Moses saith unto the sons of Israel, See, Jehovah hath called by name Bezaleel, son of Uri, son of her, of the tribe of Judah. And he doth fill him, with, the Spirit of God, in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all work. Even to devise devices to work in gold, and in silver, and in brass. And engraving of stones for settings, and engraving of wood to work in any work of design. And to direct he hath put in his heart, he and Aholiab, son of Ahizamach, of the tribe of Dan. He hath filled them with wisdom of heart to do every work, of engraver, and designer, and embroiderer, in blue, and in purple, in scarlet, and in linen, and weaver, who do any work, and of designers of designs. Chapter 36 And Bezaleel, and Aholiab, and every wise-hearted man, in whom Jehovah hath given wisdom and understanding to know to do every work of the service of the sanctuary, have done according to all that Jehovah commanded. And Moses calleth unto Bezaleel, and unto Aholiab, and unto every wise-hearted man in whose heart Jehovah hath given wisdom, every one whom his heart lifted up, to come near unto the work to do it. And they take from before Moses all the heave offering which the sons of Israel have brought in for the work of the service of the sanctuary to do it, and still they have brought in unto him a willing offering morning by morning. And all the wise men, who are doing all the work of the sanctuary, come each from his work which they are doing. And speak unto Moses, saying, the people are multiplying to bring in more than sufficient for the service of the work which Jehovah commanded to make. And Moses common death, and they cause a voice to pass over through the camp, saying, Let not man or woman make any more work for the heave offering of the sanctuary, and the people are restrained from bringing. And the work hath been sufficient for them, for all the work, to do it, and to leave. And all the wise-hearted ones among the doers of the work make the tabernacle, ten curtains of twined linen, and blue, and purple, and scarlet, with, cherubs, work of a designer, he hath made them. The length of the one curtain, is, eight and twenty by the cubit, and the breadth of the one curtain four by the cubit, one measure, is, to all the curtains. And he joineth the five curtains one unto another, and the, other, five curtains he hath joined one unto another. And he mocketh loops of blue on the edge of the one curtain, at the end, in the joining, so he hath made in the edge of the outmost curtain, in the joining of the second. Fifty loops he hath made in the one curtain, and fifty loops hath he made in the end of the curtain which, is, in the joining of the second, the loops are taking hold one on another. And he mocketh fifty hooks of gold, and joineth the curtains one unto another by the hooks, and the tabernacle is one. And he mocketh curtains of goats, hair, for a tent over the tabernacle, eleven curtains he hath made them. The length of the one curtain, is, thirty by the cubit, and the breadth of the one curtain, is, four cubits, one measure, is, to the eleven curtains. And he joineth the five curtains apart, and the six curtains apart. And he mocketh fifty loops on the outer edge of the curtain, in the joining and fifty loops he hath made on the edge of the curtain which is joining the second. And he mocketh fifty hooks of brass to join the tent, to be one. And he mocketh a covering for the tent of ram skins made red, and a covering of badger's skins above. And he mocketh the boards for the tabernacle of shittim wood, standing up. Ten cubits, is, the length of the, one, board, and a cubit and a half the breadth of the, one, board. Two handles, are, to the one board, joined one unto another, so he hath made for all the boards of the tabernacle. And he mocketh the boards for the tabernacle, 
twenty boards for the south side southward. And forty sockets of silver he hath made under the twenty boards, two sockets under the one board for its two handles, and two sockets under the other board for its two handles. And for the second side of the tabernacle, for the north side, he hath made twenty boards. And there forty sockets of silver, two sockets under the one board, and two sockets under the other board. And for the sides of the tabernacle, westward, hath he made six boards. And two boards hath he made for the corners of the tabernacle, in the two sides. And they have been twins below, and together they are twins at its head, at the one ring, so he hath done to both of them at the two corners. And there have been eight boards, and their sockets of silver, are, sixteen sockets, two sockets under the one board. And he mocketh bars of shit in wood, five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle and five bars for the boards of the second side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the tabernacle, for the sides westward. And he mocketh the middle bar to enter into the midst of the boards from end to end. And the boards he hath overlaid with gold, and their rings he hath made of gold, places for bars, and he overlayeth the bars with gold. And he mocketh the veil of blue, and purple, and scarlet, and twined linen, work of a designer he hath made it, with, cherubs. And he mocketh for it four pillars of shittim, wood, and overlayeth them with gold, their pegs, are, of gold, and he casteth for them four sockets of silver. And he mocketh a covering for the opening of the tent, of blue, and purple, and scarlet, and twined linen, work of an embroiderer. Also its five pillars, and their pegs, and he overlaid their tops and their fillets, with, gold, and their five sockets, are, brass. Chapter 37 And Bezaleel mocketh the ark of Shittim wood, two cubits and a half its length, and a cubit and a half its breadth, and a cubit and a half its height. And he overlayeth it with pure gold within and without, and mocketh for it a wreath of gold round about. And he casteth for it four rings of gold, on its four feet, even two rings on its one side, and two rings on its second side. And he mocketh staves of shittim wood, and overlayeth them with gold. And he bringeth in the staves into the rings, by the sides of the ark, to bear the ark. And he mocketh a mercy seat of pure gold, two cubits and a half its length, and a cubit and a half its breadth. And he mocketh two cherubs of gold, of beaten work he hath made them, at the two ends of the mercy seat. One cherub at the end on this, side, and one cherub at the end on that, out of the mercy seat he hath made the cherubs, at its two ends. And the cherubs are spreading out wings on high, covering over the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces, are, one towards another, towards the mercy seat have the faces of the cherubs been. And he mocketh the table of shittim wood, two cubits its length, and a cubit its breadth, and a cubit and a half its height. And overlayeth it with pure gold, and mocketh for it a wreath of gold round about. And he mocketh for it a border of a handbreadth round about, and mocketh a wreath of gold for its border round about. And he casteth for it four rings of gold, and putteth the rings on the four corners which, are, to its four feet. Over against the border have the rings been, places for staves to bear the table. And he mocketh the staves of shittim wood, and overlayeth them with gold, to bear the table. And he mocketh the vessels which, are, upon the table, its dishes, and its bowls, and its cups, and the cups by which they pour out, of pure gold. And he mocketh the candlestick of pure gold, of beaten work he hath made the candlestick, its base, and its branch, its calyxes, its knops, and its flowers, have been of the same. And six branches are coming out of its sides, three branches of the candlestick out of its one side, and three branches of the candlestick out of its second side. Three calyxes, made like almonds, in the one branch, a knop and a flower, and three calyxes, made like almonds, in another branch, a knop and a flower, so to the six branches which are coming out of the candlestick. And in the candlestick, are, four calyxes, made like almonds, its knops, and its flowers. And a knop under the two branches of the same, and a knop under the two branches of the same, and a knop under the two branches of the same, are, 
to the six branches which are coming out of it. Their knops and their branches have been of the same, all of it one beaten work of pure gold. And he mocketh its seven lamps, and its snuffers, and its snuff dishes, of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold he hath made it, and all its vessels. And he mocketh the perfume altar of shittim wood, a cubit its length, and a cubit its breadth, square, and two cubits its height, its horns have been of the same. And he overlayeth it with pure gold, its top and its sides round about, and its horns, and he mocketh for it a wreath of gold round about. And two rings of gold he hath made for it under its wreath, at its two corners, at its two sides, for places for staves to bear it with them. And he mocketh the staves of shittim wood, and overlayeth them with gold. And he mocketh the holy anointing oil, and the pure spice perfume, work of a compounder. Chapter 38 And he mocketh the altar of burnt offering of shittim wood, five cubits its length, and five cubits its breadth, square, and three cubits its height. And he mocketh its horns on its four corners, its horns have been of the same, and he overlayeth it with brass. And he mocketh all the vessels of the altar, the pots, and the shovels, and the sprinkling pans, the forks, and the fire pans, all its vessels he hath made of brass. And he mocketh for the altar a brazen grate of network, under its border beneath, unto its midst. And he casteth four rings for the four ends of the brazen grate, places for bars. And he mocketh the staves of shittim wood, and overlayeth them with brass. And he bringeth in the staves into the rings on the sides of the altar, to bear it with them, hollow, with, boards he made it. And he mocketh the laver of brass, and its base of brass, with the looking glasses of the women assembling, who have assembled at the opening of the tent of meeting. And he mocketh the court, at the south side southward, the hangings of the court of twined linen, a hundred by the cubit. Their pillars, are, twenty, and their brazen sockets twenty, the pegs of the pillars and their fillets, are, silver. And at the north side, a hundred by the cubit, their pillars, are, twenty, and their sockets of brass twenty, the pegs of the pillars and their fillets, are, silver. And at the west side, are, hangings, fifty by the cubit, their pillars, are, ten, and their sockets ten, the pegs of the pillars and their fillets, are, silver. And at the east side eastward fifty cubits. The hangings on the side, are, fifteen cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. And at the second side at the gate of the court, on this and on that, are, hangings, fifteen cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. All the hangings of the court round about, are, of twined linen. And the sockets for the pillars of brass, the pegs of the pillars and their fillets of silver, and the overlaying of their tops of silver, and all the pillars of the court are filleted with silver. And the covering of the gate of the court, is, the work of an embroiderer, of blue, and purple, and scarlet, and twined linen, and twenty cubits, is, the length, and the height with the breadth five cubits, over against the hangings of the court. And their pillars, are, four, and their sockets of brass four, their pegs, are, of silver, and the overlaying of their tops and their fillets, are, of silver. And all the pins for the tabernacle, and for the court roundabout, are, of brass. These are the numberings of the tabernacle, the tabernacle of testimony, which hath been numbered by the command of Moses, the service of the Levites, by the hand of Ithamar son of Aaron the priest. And Bezaleel son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, hath made all that Jehovah commanded Moses. And with him, is, Aholiab son of Ahizamach, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver, and designer, an embroiderer in blue, and in purple, and in scarlet, and in linen. All the gold which is prepared for the work in all the work of the sanctuary, and it is the gold of the wave offering, is, twenty and nine talents, and seven hundred and thirty shekels, by the shekel of the sanctuary. And the silver of those numbered of the company, is, a hundred talents, and a thousand and seven hundred and five and seventy shekels, by the shekel of the sanctuary. A becca for a pole, half a shekel, by the shekel of the sanctuary, for every one who is passing over unto those numbered, 
from a son of twenty years and upwards, for six hundred thousand, and three thousand, and five hundred and fifty. And a hundred talents of silver are to cast the sockets of the sanctuary, and the sockets of the veil, a hundred sockets for the hundred talents, a talent for a socket. And the thousand and seven hundred and five and seventy he hath made pegs for the pillars, and overlaid their tops, and filleted them. And the brass of the wave offering, is, seventy talents, and two thousand and four hundred shekels. And he mocketh with it the sockets of the opening of the tent of meeting, and the brazen altar, and the brazen grate which it hath, and all the vessels of the altar. And the sockets of the court round about, and the sockets of the gate of the court, and all the pins of the tabernacle, and all the pins of the court round about. Chapter 39 And of the blue, and the purple, and the scarlet, they made colored garments, to minister in the sanctuary, and they make the holy garments which, are, for Aaron, as Jehovah hath commanded Moses. And he mocketh the ephod, of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and twined linen. And they expand the plates of gold, and have cut off wires to work in the midst of the blue, and in the midst of the purple, and in the midst of the scarlet, and in the midst of the linen, work of a designer. Shoulder pieces they have made for it, joining, at its two ends it is joined. And the girdle of his ephod which, is, on it is of the same, according to its work, of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and twined linen, as Jehovah hath commanded Moses. And they prepare the shoam stones, set, embroidered, with, gold, opened with openings of a signet, by the names of the sons of Israel. And he setteth them on the shoulders of the ephod, stones of memorial for the sons of Israel, as Jehovah hath commanded Moses. And he mocketh the breastplate, work of a designer, like the work of the ephod, of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and twined linen. It hath been square, double they have made the breastplate, a span its length, and a span its breadth, doubled. And they fill in it four rows of stones, a row of a sardius, a topaz, and a carbuncle, is, the one row. And the second row an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row an opal, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row a barrel, an onyx, and a jasper, set, embroidered, with, gold, in their settings. And the stones, according to the names of the sons of Israel, are twelve, according to their names, openings of a signet, each according to his name, for the twelve tribes. And they make on the breastplate wreathed chains, work of thick bands, of pure gold. And they make two embroidered things of gold, and two rings of gold, and put the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. And they put the two thick bands of gold on the two rings on the ends of the breastplate. And the two ends of the two thick bands they have put on the two embroidered things, and they put them on the shoulders of the ephod, over against its front. And they make two rings of gold, and set, them, on the two ends of the breastplate, on its border, which, is, on the side of the ephod within. And they make two rings of gold, and put them on the two shoulders of the ephod below, over against its front, over against its joining, above the girdle of the ephod. And they bind the breastplate by its rings unto the rings of the ephod, with a ribbon of blue, to be above the girdle of the ephod, and the breastplate is not loosed from off the ephod, as Jehovah hath commanded Moses. And he mocketh the upper robe of the ephod, work of a weaver, completely of blue. And the opening of the upper robe, is, in its midst, as the opening of a habergeon, a border, is, to its opening round about, it is not rent. And they make on the hems of the upper robe pomegranates of blue, and purple, and scarlet, twined. And they make bells of pure gold, and put the bells in the midst of the pomegranates, on the hems of the upper robe, round about, in the midst of the pomegranates. A bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate, are, on the hems of the upper robe, round about, to minister in, as Jehovah hath commanded Moses. And they make the coats of linen, work of a weaver, for Aaron and for his sons. And the mitre of linen, and the beautiful bonnets of linen, and the linen trousers, of twined linen. And the girdle of twined linen, and blue, and purple, and scarlet, work of an embroiderer, as Jehovah hath commanded Moses.
And they make the flower of the holy crown of pure gold, and write on it a writing, openings of a signet, holy to Jehovah. And they put on it a ribbon of blue, to put, it, on the mitre above, as Jehovah hath commanded Moses. And all the service of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting is completed, and the sons of Israel do according to all that Jehovah hath commanded Moses, so they have done. And they bring in the tabernacle unto Moses, the tent, and all its vessels, its hooks, its boards, its bars, and its pillars, and its sockets. And the covering of ram's skins, which are made red, and the covering of badger's skins, and the veil of the covering. The ark of the testimony and its staves, and the mercy seat. The table, all its vessels, and the bread of the presence. The pure candlestick, its lamps, the lamps of arrangement, and all its vessels, and the oil for the light. And the golden altar, and the anointing oil, and the spice perfume, and the covering of the opening of the tent. The brazen altar and the brazen grate which it hath, its staves, and all its vessels, the laver and its base. The hangings of the court, its pillars, and its sockets, and the covering for the gate of the court, its cords, and its pins, and all the vessels of the service of the tabernacle, for the tent of meeting. The colored clothes to minister in the sanctuary, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons, to act as priest in. According to all that Jehovah hath commanded Moses, so have the sons of Israel done all the service. And Moses seeth all the work, and lo, they have done it as Jehovah hath commanded, so they have done. And Moses doth bless them. Chapter 40 And Jehovah speaketh unto Moses, saying, On the first day of the month, in the first month, thou dost raise up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. And hast set there the ark of the testimony, and hast covered over the ark with the veil. And hast brought in the table and set its arrangement in order, and hast brought in the candlestick, and caused its lamps to go up. And thou hast put the golden altar for perfume before the ark of the testimony, and hast put the covering of the opening to the tabernacle. And hast put the altar of the burnt offering before the opening of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. And hast put the laver between the tent of meeting and the altar, and hast put water there. And thou hast set the court round about and hast placed the covering of the gate of the court. And hast taken the anointing oil, and anointed the tabernacle, and all that, is, in it, and hallowed it, and all its vessels, and it hath been holy. And thou hast anointed the altar of the burnt offering, and all its vessels, and sanctified the altar, and the altar hath been most holy. And thou hast anointed the laver and its base, and sanctified it. And thou hast brought near Aaron and his sons unto the opening of the tent of meeting, and hast bathed them with water. And thou hast clothed Aaron with the holy garments, and anointed him, and sanctified him, and he hath acted as priest to me. And his sons thou dost bring near, and hast clothed them with coats. And anointed them as thou hast anointed their father, and they have acted as priests to me, and their anointing hath been to be to them for a priesthood age during. To their generations. And Moses doth according to all that Jehovah hath commanded him, so he hath done. And it cometh to pass, in the first month, in the second year, in the first of the month, the tabernacle hath been raised up. And Moses riseth up the tabernacle, and setteth its sockets, and placeth its boards, and placeth its bars, and riseth its pillars. And spreadeth the tent over the tabernacle, and putteth the covering of the tent upon it above, as Jehovah hath commanded Moses. And he taketh and putteth the testimony unto the ark, and setteth the staves on the ark, and putteth the mercy seat on the ark above. And bringeth in the ark unto the tabernacle, and placeth the veil of the covering, and covereth over the ark of the testimony, as Jehovah hath commanded Moses. And he putteth the table in the tent of meeting, on the side of the tabernacle northward, at the outside of the veil. And setteth in order upon it the arrangement of bread, before Jehovah, as Jehovah hath commanded Moses. And he putteth the candlestick in the tent of meeting, over against the table, on the side of the tabernacle southward. And causeth the lamps to go up before Jehovah, as Jehovah hath commanded Moses. 
And he setteth the golden altar in the tent of meeting, before the veil. And mocketh perfume on it, spice perfume, as Jehovah hath commanded Moses. And he setteth the covering of the opening to the tabernacle. And the altar of the burnt offering he hath set at the opening of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, and causeth the burnt offering to go up upon it, and the present, as Jehovah hath commanded Moses. And he putteth the laver between the tent of meeting and the altar, and putteth water there for washing. And Moses and Aaron and his sons have washed their hands and their feet at the same. In their going in unto the tent of meeting, and in their drawing near unto the altar, they wash, as Jehovah hath commanded Moses. And he riseth up the court round about the tabernacle, and about the altar, and placeth the covering of the gate of the court, and Moses completeth the work. And the cloud covereth the tent of meeting, and the honour of Jehovah hath filled the tabernacle. And Moses hath not been able to go in unto the tent of meeting, for the cloud hath tabernacled on it, and the honour of Jehovah hath filled the tabernacle. And in the going up of the cloud from off the tabernacle the sons of Israel journey in all their journeys. And if the cloud go not up then they journey not, until the day of its going up. For the cloud of Jehovah, is, on the tabernacle by day, and fire is in it by night, before the eyes of all the house of Israel in all their journeys.